Hey, what's up, ecosystem? Tonight's featured interview is Justin with Fuel Cards for Truck Drivers and Auto Hauler Factoring Services. You're going to want to check that out. And the live discussion panel is about the future of auto auctions in the near future as we know it. So bring your questions, buckle in. It's Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. How you guys doing? Welcome back again to Auto Transport Intel. I do appreciate you tuning in. It means a lot to me. It's Tuesday Nights Live, and that means we're back on Auto Transport Intel. Do me a favor. If this is your first time here, uh, please ask questions. Join the live chat. Feel like you can do that. You know, if I bring bad news, it's just because I'm trying to keep it real. But otherwise, this is a pretty safe place, and I hope you feel welcome. Also, if you are returning, um, or, you know, even if you're new, if you see an audio glitch or a video problem, please let me know. Um, I, You know, I really appreciate all the feedback I can get. I'm the only one here in the studio right now, so... Um, yeah, I do it all. And I'm here every Tuesday night talking about all things car hauling. In fact, you know, I got the question, um, what is this? What, what's the whole point of Auto Transport Intel? And you know what it is, is that I realized, you know, if you're looking for like a bass fishing magazine, there's like 14 to choose from. Or if you're looking for a TV show about house flipping, there's like 30. Okay, but if you want to learn car hauling, where, where do you go? Well, you got nothing. There is no news information resource. And so I'm lucky enough, I got to create the first car hauling business channel of its kind. There are forums, there are groups, those are great places to get information. But if you want to see a weekly news show and stay tuned with car hauling, why do you need to stay tuned with car hauling? Well, let me tell you. There's a lot of folks that don't know anything about car shipping, and that's fine until they need to move a car. And then they have expectations that need to be managed. Or what if you're thinking of getting in, getting into this business, right? Do you know how to properly get into this business without wasting a, lot, a bunch of money? What if you're already in car hauling and you need to save money or get the right equipment, get the right combo, get coaching? What if you're a fleet and you need to sign up, get drivers, right? There's a lot to know. Man, there's car hauling software all over the place, new load boards, things changing, brokers. There's so much to learn, and that's what we do here at the Car Hauling Business Channel. So I appreciate you guys coming back. Listen, you know that uh, what I do is I start the show and I welcome you. I appreciate you tuning in. It means a lot. So in a few minutes, I'm going to go into the live chat, say hello. Yeah, I got these fancy, you know, pages and scenes and stuff that I put together. I work really hard on this show, so I'm going to do that. And then at 20 minutes into the show, I'm going to share the memes that other people don't want. So if you've got crazy memes that have to do with auto hauling and car shipping, send them to me, autotransportintel at gmail.com, and I'll put them on my show. And that way you can stay out of Facebook jail. Now listen. At the 30-minute mark, our interview is Justin with Trucker's Advantage. He's going to talk about fuel card programs, auto hauler factoring programs, and he's got a few other uh, affiliate referral programs that try to help you save money. You're out on the road. You're buying fuel. 
on a regular basis, why not save money when you do it? So we're going to talk to Justin. This could be a great interview. I'm excited to have him here. And then I'm going to let him go, and we're going to have an auto auctions live panel. Now, auto auctions are changing a lot. I don't know if you know. I mean, some of you know more than others. And so we're going to talk about it. And I've got a good group here. Man, okay, so Nick, he created Go For It app. And I hope he'll help clarify that. But he is with us, and he's leading the conversation. And to participate will be Ty of CTS, Ziggy of IATA. He's going to tell you about IATA as well. And Jason Kendall of Kendall Enterprises. He is a car hauling YouTuber. So, man, we have a great show. Um, and let's see here. Okay, I'm going to let that in. And, okay, man, I'm, wow, I'm getting some awesome uh, live chats, man. <laughs> Like, all right. Okay, I appreciate that. So, I told you what Auto Transport Intel is. This really is the car hauling business channel. Listen, if you just joined us, it's 8.06 or 9.06 Eastern or 6.06 Pacific. If you just joined the show, you haven't missed anything. We're still on the introductory stage saying hello, talking about the car hauling business channel, that it's here every Tuesday night. Feel free to spread the word. And I'm excited. I'm actually, I'm going to help do that. Oh, by the way, you see these logos on the page? That's right. I've signed up a couple more sponsors because this thing is happening, okay? If you don't want this car hauling business channel to keep moving forward, um, I don't have a recommendation for you because it's happening. There's a lot to know, and I need sponsorship to help build the channel, and that's happening too. So I want to thank Sun Country Trailers for being my sponsor in April. And um, two weeks ago, we had um, Aliza and Brian of Sun Country Trailers on the show. Last week, we had Ben, Parts and Service Manager. Well, next week, we're going to have PFA, Transportation Insurance and Surety Services. They're going to be on the show. And then in May, we're going to have Penny Royston of Evil Sizer and Associates. She's going to be on the show. And PFA and Evil Sizer are going to sponsor me in May. And that's awesome. And also... In May, we're going to have, I'm going to be at AHA speaking in a breakout session with Sun Country Trailers. I'm telling you, there's a lot happening. So, um, and I appreciate you guys tuning in. It means a lot. So let's go into the live chat. Um, you know, I look over here, I got the screen over here. What I need is, I need a screen behind camera. That's what I really need. Maybe we'll get that next. And it looks like the audio's okay. Let's see if I got any messages here. Um... Like a Godzilla movie. <laughs> uh, sound off video. Okay, sound off video. Okay, I think I know what that means. Because I my audio's coming in. So sound off during the video. I think that's what she means. Okay, thank you, Kimberly. I appreciate that. And I really mean it. If you've got anything to let me know, I want to know. I'm trying to make this show as great as I can. And I work on it all day on Tuesdays, man. Tuesdays are busy. Okay, so listen, we got Anytime Towing Vermont is here. What's up, Ecosystem? You got that right, Matt. Early, but getting ready for the last leg home. We'll be listening. And by the way, uh, Matt, I've got your update, and we're going to hear from you. I'm going to read that. Man, this show's going to go fast. Uh, Tim at LRT Transport. What's up, Jay? Looking forward to another good show. Thank you, Tim. That means a lot. I really appreciate that. Um, and thank you for tuning in. TV... Uh, TVix1. Yo, what's up, TVix? Thanks for tuning in. I do appreciate it. It takes so long for Tuesday to come around. Thank you, Mark, at Trucking Answers. Listen, every Monday, Mark is live on YouTube at 1 o'clock Eastern p.m. That's 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern. If you've got trucking questions, Mark has Trucking Answers. Check his show out. Very popular show. Tommy Lund says, hey, Jay, happy Tuesday. Well, happy Tuesday, Tommy. Thank you for tuning in. Go ahead and give you one of those. Hope it serves you well. Uh, you know, it's like uh, garlic. You keep the vampires away. Okay, Bill at Bad Apple says, What's up, Jay? What's up, Bill? Thanks for tuning in, man. T Vix says, Good stuff. Well, thank you, T Vix one. I really appreciate that. Rescue 15 CMS. Hey, Jay, it's Chris from Virginia. Nice to talk to you and Ty last week. Awesome. Thanks for saying hello. Thanks for reaching out to CTS. Uh, we're, we're happy to help. I really appreciate that. And Matt from Anytime Towing, a lot safer than Facebook. Yeah, well, Safebook's a little crazy. Safebook. Safebook is a little crazy. 
Oh, TVix1, that's good. Bill says audio and video is off. Okay, so wait. Check, check. Okay. Interesting. So the audio and the video is off. That's interesting. Maybe it was in... Uh, you know what? I get this message, and I got to check out the resolution in the beginning of the show. Um, so I got to check that out. Something about the resolution. So maybe that was it. Always, uh, always, man, always something to tinker with, right? Uh, let's see. Hey, Ty and Jay, I'm studying for a lantern fly permit for Pennsylvania. Everyone make sure you're compliant to Pennsylvania by 2020. Yeah, it's no joke, man. The lantern fly is, I mean, I don't even know what to say. Good. He put a link in there. Yeah. Cause I, I don't, it's, it's real and you got to know about it. And I don't even, I don't know. I don't want to, my, it makes my head hurt actually. The video and the sound is still off. The video and the sound is still off. Really? Still off. Oh, okay. So I think what you're saying is there's a delay between the audio and the video. Okay, so I'll tell you what. Let me see if... Check, check. Okay. I'm going to keep going. Um, check, check. Okay, so I just tried that. Okay, so I think there is, there might be a delay. Monitor and output. I'm going to try this. Okay, we're going to try that. I don't know if that will help it or not. Keep me posted. Hey, Jay, it's Marcus from Exclusive Luxury Transport. Back again. Cool, man. Um, and it could be, it actually could be the, uh, it could be the computer. It could be the processor. Keep me posted on how that's going. If it doesn't get any better, then check, check. That's interesting. I hate that kind of stuff. Okay. Hey, J Factoring, no kidding. You know, it's interesting is that factoring, I, I think you got to be careful. Listen, it's like anything else. It's like using credit cards. You don't want to have to use your credit card. But if you do need to use your credit card, you want to you have the best credit card deal you can get, right? With your interest rate, it's like that. So we're going to get into it. Go for it. System says hello. Hey, what's up? Good evening, Chris from Virginia. Thanks to you and Ty for the chat last week. First live been part of. Hey, that's pretty cool. Safe book. I know, dude. It's out of sync. Yeah, there's a delay. Delay. It's fine here, says Matt. Really? Delay your lips go before the audio. My lips go before the audio. Aha. That helps, actually. So let's try this. Let's try. How about check, Mike, check, check, check. One, two. Do my lips match the audio? Maybe. We'll see. It's only delayed by a second or two. Well, I just updated the milliseconds because I actually know about that setting. Still a delay between the audio and the video. That's very interesting. Keep me posted, will you? Because I just updated the milliseconds and hopefully there is no delay, but there could be. And I know, I, I think that's, I don't like that kind of stuff. You think it's good, Brian? Okay. I appreciate that. See? See, we're helping each other. This is a community, man. This is what it's all about. Thank you so much. And keep me posted on that. Also, if it's if it's too loud, let me know if it's too loud. Little bit of delay there still. That's interesting. Um, at, at that point, I can't. I don't have any other settings to change. 10 count. So I'll tell you what. Um... I'm going to keep going because I think it's an internet delay. That's what, I, that's what I'm thinking. So I'm going to keep going. Let's see what happens. All righty. So in fact, it's 8.15. Hey, Leyland Lucero says, what's up? Hey, Leyland. Thanks for tuning in. Let's go to industry news, you guys. And in fact, on industry news, you can't see my lips as much. Oh, by the way, did you see the thumbnail for this? This is the show tonight, okay? So I'm showing this, fuel cards and factoring. So if you see this thumbnail, it's tonight's show. This is episode 82. And by the way, don't be fooled, man. This show is not just about fuel cards and factoring. That's the interview. But at 9 o'clock, we're going to talk about auto auctions. And we're going to have a pretty big discussion in live panel. So uh, if, if even if you, if you got, already got fuel cards and you're good... You know, go ahead. You got 30 minutes to go, you know, run laps, do something else, and then come back at 9 o'clock. All right? And if you're watching on demand, just go ahead and fast forward to that 
one hour mark and uh, we'll be good to go. You know? All right, cool. So let's do some industry news. Okay. All right. Now, you know, I say that I like the memes, right? I don't mind memes. And so here we got some memes. The only people up at 3 a.m. are in love, lonely, drunk, or truck drivers. Seems legit. I have a very particular set of skills, like backing in a 53-foot trailer at a 90-degree angle in pitch black. And then unloading it. Do you know where I can get info about fuel discounts? Right here, you can get info. You're going to get information in about 15 minutes, Brian. Awesome. Yeah, man. If you're buying fuel on a regular basis, you should have a fuel card. That goes for everybody. Save money. You may be hardcore, but are you rebuild the car in the street hardcore? <laughs> this guy is awesome. That's awesome. That's somebody's memory of their dad. Somewhere in Wisconsin today. Oh, cool. They're here to save us. Can I see your logbook? <laughs> oh, man. That's just not right. But it is funny. It's pretty funny. Oh, here. I got another... Uh, let's see. I got another text. Not in sync. Out of sync. Yeah, I'm trying. Keep me posted. Because I can't... I don't think I have anything else I can do. I'm hoping the internet catches up is what I'm hoping. Okay. I know this is a bad time, but do you have your logbook? Feeling cute. You guys seen the feeling cute memes? It's like all over the place. I'm, I I don't know. I'm, I'm still undecided. I don't really like the feeling cute memes, but... Um, oh, in fact, you know what I could do? Is I could try... Here, I'll tell you what. I'll try this. Let's do... I got an idea, guys. I got an idea. Here's what I'm going to do. Okay, let's do... Let's do... By the way, we're going to have the uh, CTS Business Coaching question of the day here shortly. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and turn this video on. Okay, now... Am I still out of sync? How about that? I don't know. I might not be. So let me know. Let me know how this. Let me so let me know if this is better. I think it's closer. We'll see. All right. So now let's go ahead and share the screen. And back to feeling cute. Might do a level one later. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm just the, the feeling cute stuff is uh, something about it. There's something about this meme. That should be a meme. There's something about this meme. Did you know? Oh, here we go. Prohibition. This is pretty specific. I think this was shared by the... You are good to go. You are good. Thank you, guys. That's awesome. Yeah, working together. Knocking them down. All right, it's better now. All right, cool. Thanks, guys. Uh, prohibition on the use of amber stop lamps and tail lamps. No commercial motor vehicle may be equipped with an amber stop lamp. A tail lamp or other lamp which is optically combined with an amber stop lamp or tail lamp. Yeah, we're going to have to write you up with 393.11. You guys have got to amber lamp. I'll tell you what. I also saw a blue lamp. That's going to be 393.11 DFR. <laughs> oh, my God. Get out of here, man. Okay, no amber lamps. You heard it here on Auto Transport Intel. Not another feeling cute. Feeling cute. Might ruin your day later. I don't know. Okay. Oh, man, look at that. 950 bucks. Feeling cute. 950 bucks later. Hey, this is Dispatch. I have a load for you from Americold. I can't go. My fifth wheel's flat. My fifth wheel's flat. <laughs> Muffler bearing needs replacement, and I need to get some blinker fluid. <laughs> That's mother trucker. Okay, let me know after you fix your truck. Uh, dispatch be like, bring your lube. Oh, come on. It's a family show. 
dispatchers choosing what trucks to screw. That's pretty funny. You know, I include all humor, all right? Whether you're a driver, dispatcher, broker, lead generator, and man, it's all welcome, you know? That we're just gonna we're gonna make fun of whoever the meme targets. No more feeling cute. I know, man. I'm tired of feeling that. I'd rather watch what's the stupid challenge? The Kiki challenge? I'd rather watch Oh, size matters. <laughs> I don't dig around with trucks. Your best quote. Seriously. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that's not real. Your best quote. That's pretty funny. Feeling cute. Might move cars later. Might move... What is going on there? Oh my gosh. Wow. You know, but, I mean... You know, man's gotta work. Um, okay. So here we've got... This is your... Well, hopefully the U-body's coming off first. What in the... Really? Hopefully those aren't windows. Dude, these look a little smashed. Oh my gosh. That is crazy. People skiing on a runaway truck ramp is a level of stupidity I've not seen in a long time. <laughs> ah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, that's cool. I know. Cool. You good to go now? That's awesome. Question of the day, month and year. I have a truck and trailer I just bought. Can I make money in car hauling? Yeah, I mean, really. Can I make money skiing on a ramp? We notice when you move over. Thank you. You know? When you pass road workers, drive like they're your family because they're someone's. Uh, see, you know, we we do have, we have something to say here, right? You know, I, I put these in here because you do see people like, I mean, I, I see people not moving over. Like, I think every time I drive through a construction zone, it's kind of crazy. You know, it's only when there's an officer sitting there that people start to pay attention. But, you know, what are you going to do? Okay, uh, I think the truck is stuck. In fact, I think we can prove it. Yeah, that's gonna be, it's gonna be a problem. That's gonna be a problem. That's gonna be a problem. Dang. That blows. <laughs> um, any other options besides three grand and waiting till Monday? I'm telling you, this, man, this is no joke. Save the date for Inventory Paradise at Cargaritaville. Mannheim, Orlando. I mean, that's a pretty good... Actually, that's some pretty good marketing because an auction itself, you know, if you just said Auto Auctionville, but, you know, Cargaritaville, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Jimmy Buffett might buy some cars. <laughs> I don't know, might be able... Feeling cute? Okay. Hey, Ty. First successful week. 12 deliveries so far. This is from Basil. This is a text from Basil. That is awesome, man. So good job, Basil. Dude, seriously. That is awesome. Yeah, man. Living the dream, dude. Making it happen. CTS. So let's go ahead and uh, let's do that. Let's do... Um, yeah, because actually then we're going to go into... Uh, the CTS business coaching question of the day is, are you saving money when you buy fuel? Are you? Are you saving money? Because we know you need to save money. If you're in trucking or car hauling, you need to save every penny you can. So when you're buying fuel, are you saving money? This question has been brought to you by CTS business coaching. Visit ctsbusinesscoaching.com. Got a question? Getting into car hauling? You might need transport business coaching. Visit ctsbusinesscoaching.com. All right. Okay, so here's one for you. 
Oh, whoops. Let's move back to this. Okay. Oh, that's let's do that. All right, check this out. Here's a rant for you. This guy's serious, man. All right. If you aren't happy with the rates, if you can't make a profit running freight the way you normally do, what are you doing to change the way you do business? This sounds like, that's what I'm reading. This sounds like something we would say at CTS, okay? Are you booking two to three days in advance at low rates? Even booking the same day as pickup, you'll still be able to drop the next day on a 450, 550 mile run and you'll get a better rate most of the time. Now, I read this. This was a freight hauler, but I mean, he is speaking the language that all drivers understand. Are you insisting on getting home on a specific day on a regular basis? Oh, man, as a dispatcher, would I say this? Stop. Be more flexible and wait for the load that pays well to get you home. Don't get it fixed in your head that you'll always have to be home on a certain day. If you do, you're going to end up taking what's offered instead of what you want. Do you only run long haul but can't believe how cheap the loads are? Change your pattern. You can pick and drop a 450, 500 mile load in 24 hours or less. Stack four to five up a week if long haul isn't doing it for you. Don't like to be more than 250 miles from home, but those short hauls aren't paying well? Get to know the rest of the U.S. Follow the money, even if it takes you someplace new. If you've decided that you're only going to do business one way, and the market isn't cooperating with what you ideally want to do, or you're losing it, then you have three choices. Option one, keep doing what you're doing and get aggravated about how unfair the market is. All right? Option two, change the way you do business and adapt to market conditions. Find a new formula for success. Option three, shut the doors. That's pretty, uh, man, this guy... I like the way this guy wraps it up. Ranting online about brokers, shippers, rates, steering wheel holders, foreigners, the perceived injustice of the world, etc. will accomplish absolutely nothing and it makes you look foolish. Spending your energy coming up with a new plan for success, that's the mark of a real professional. Which one are you going to be? Wow, man. Throwing it down. That was awesome. This guy got a lot of likes on this post. And um, I didn't want to call him out in case, you know, I don't know. In case he's not a fan of auto transport intel or something crazy. But I really do appreciate it. It's it's wise words. And um, that is something that uh, we can all use a lot more of. By the way, here we go. Here's Matt from Anytime Towing. Check this out. So I told you guys I was going to be taking it slow, getting things rolling in the spring. I'm going to give you an update. I took Ty's advice, and I'm using what I have, and really only made one small purchase of a two-car gooseneck for three grand. I think a Sun Country will be in my future if what I'm doing keeps up. So I have a customer that started getting me to do his shop customers' hot rods and projects, and that is what got me rolling on the transport gig to begin with. So I started doing backhauls, and I'll explain my game so far. Right now, it's moving projects for the customer and filling in backhauls. What that has landed me was a U-ship load that I mentioned on your show a few weeks ago. I search out the problem childs, the larger loads the customers have been put off by brokers and can't get done. So far, it's been box trucks, bread trucks, utility trucks, etc. Well... One of my back hauls or hauls led me to LA and a company buying these box trucks up all over the different auctions. Well, they liked my service and now are having me grab these trucks all over. Between my two car gooseneck and my rollback, it's been progressing quickly. I'm currently moving a race car for my good customer who has paid me both ways, so no back haul is needed. I've also made another connection when delivering a trailer to Florida. Sounds like he wants me to haul him around to different locations with his supercars. So although I'm not moving a ton of cars, I found a niche for now. I'm hauling cool cars or problem box trucks one way or another. The word is spreading around town. Here locally that I've stepped into hauling classics and oversized stuff at the IAA locally. It's led to more calls than jobs, 
but I wouldn't be able to do all of it anyways. I promote you guys constantly and hope it's led to some consults or at least another person listening to you. And it has. Thank you, Matt. Anyways, just an update. I love listening. Really appreciate everything you're doing for the industry. I still feel brokers are the biggest issue with our rates, and I know it's a necessary evil for some. But they are swindling loads off the boards to repost them for less and use us to do the dirty work. Most are untruthful with customers to get the load, and that is my biggest problem. There's no transparency. I have refused about a dozen decent paying loads due to brokers being in a jam. I told them to give my number directly to the customer, which only happened once due to a location, I think. He threw in the towel at that point. But it's working to my benefit to ask if it's a broker now that I know what I'm listening for. I think I moved some stuff for brokers before and didn't realize what I was doing. Again, thanks, and see you tomorrow night. You know, I'll tell you, and what's cool, not once in here did he talk about load boards or being aggravated with rates. It's about building a business and finding a way to find your niche and specialize in your niche and grow your customer network. Here's that box truck he's talking about. And you know what, Matt? We really appreciate you sharing this information. It is possible to build a business but that simple question can I make money car hauling well yeah you can but it's not easy it will take work you will have to build your network and <sighs> there's a lot there's a lot to be said it is not just you don't just get your truck get your trailer and gold bars fall from the sky it, it's not gonna happen and we say it all the time, and I know it's offensive, and somebody somewhere is going to get upset, and you know what? That's okay. Because if we keep it real for the other 95%, well, then that's that's what we have to do, and that's our job, man. So, um, yeah, man. Thank you guys so much for that information. Matt, thanks for sharing that. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to go to, we're going to hear from Sun Country Trailers. And when we come back, we're going to bring Justin on the show, and we're going to talk about fuel cards and auto hauler factoring. So sit back and relax, learn about Sun Country, high quality manufactured trailers based out of Phoenix, and I'll see you right after this message. At Sun Country Trailers, we're committed to manufacturing durable car haulers that get the job done safely and efficiently. Our skilled team hand builds each next generation anniversary edition five car hauler using precision cut parts for industrial strength and ease of loading, ensuring premium quality you can rely on. It's low profile, star punched flooring, hydraulic systems, and three point ratchet straps allow for safe and easy loading while the tube frame and powder coat finish provide unmatched durability. The angled curve at the front of this car carrier allows for more room in the first two positions. Designed for moving minivans, SUVs, and crossovers, the additional space also allows for more creative loading. There are a wide variety of optional upgrades to choose from, such as heavy-duty ramps, LED light packages, flip-out extensions, and more to create the perfect hauler for every job. Whether you're hauling regionally or nationally, low-profile or high-profile, trust Sun Country Trailers to go the distance. Learn more online at suncountrytrailers.com. Or give us a call at 866-887-2453. All right. Thank you, Sun Country Trailers, so much for being my sponsor in this month of April 2019. It means so much. Great having you guys on the show. Listen, if you have a question about Sun Country Trailers, just go ahead and send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com, and we'll put you in touch with the right folks because we really do want to help you get into the right trailer. Now, also, I've got uh, here we've got Justin of Trucker's Advantage. He's joining me live, and we're going to talk about April fuel cards and factoring services. Now, I, Justin, I can hear the show in the background, so do me a favor, and I thank you for watching the show, but do me a favor, yeah, turn the show off or down, 
and that way we can hear you crisp and clean. And also, I can see that you've joined, but I can't see the video yet. And there we go, Justin. All right, hey, man. Man. hey, all right. Welcome to the show, Justin. What's up, my man? How you doing? Hey, I appreciate it, man. It seems like we just talked. Time flies. We did. We did. Yeah. We did. <laughs> we did. And, well, and you know what's cool? We got to meet at Matt's. We got to physically meet at the Mid America Truck Show, and that was awesome, man. Finally, I know we've been talking for a few months now. Shaggy introduced us. And, uh, you know, it was good to bring all of us and some of our partners there together. It was a good combining of forces and meeting of the minds, I would call it. I agree with you because what's cool is, I mean, you're in touch with a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and that's a big part I of try what, to be. Right, well, you, it's, I mean, I'm telling you, every time I saw you, there were other people around that had businesses. They were promoting their services. That's a big part of what you do. Yeah. A lot of networking, a lot of networking and bringing our partners that we've handpicked that, you know, we definitely believe are the best in the industry. So it's all about making it easy for the people that don't really know or that are new to the industry. That's our mission and goal is to help them get set up with the right companies and services. Okay. So on that note, and thank you for that. So, all right. So your name is Justin. And mm -hmm. you are you're available to help people get into the programs, save money, get the services that they need in exactly in the trucking industry. In the trucking industry. All yep. right, cool. So why don't you? I, I, I talked about fuel cards. We're also going to talk about talk about factoring, but t let's talk about fuel cards for a bit. What's, okay. Tell me more about the fuel card programs that are available and and why they're so important. Well, most of the fuel card companies that are out there well, are typically given through factoring companies, right? So the ones that are given through factoring companies are typically only given away 10 cents, maybe 12 cents off a gallon. So the fuel card that we started working with and that we're able to provide to everybody is given away 15 cents off a gallon and 20 cents off a gallon. So 15 awesome. cents off at TA and Petro and then 20 cents off a gallon at Love. So, you know, every penny counts. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that I talk to on a daily basis when they're like, you know, we're, we're already getting 10 or 11 cents off a gallon and they don't see the value in switching, you know, just for a difference of four to, you know, nine cents, 10 cents off a gallon. But then when you actually dig deep and you find out how many gallons they're purchasing a month, how many trucks they have, and then you multiply that over the course of 12 months in a year, you know, it's good. It's going to say it could save them their truck payment. That's awesome. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, do you have, can you give some examples of numbers, you know, historically when mm -hmm. a, what a driver's yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, typically, you know, if a truck is pretty much running pretty solid, um, they're going to purchase anywhere from 15 to 2000 gallons a month. Right. So if you're purchasing 22,000 gallons a month and it's an average between 15 and 20 cents off in, in discounts, you're looking at $350 a month per truck and then about, you know, $4,200 a year per truck. So it's, you know, it's significant savings, especially, you know, if you're a business owner, you have so many different type of, um, you know, payments and, and things that you got to pay for throughout the year. So, you know, if you can save a few bucks here and a few bucks there, I mean, that's how you're going to stay in business and, and get ahead of the game. I'm going to put this on the screen. Okay. 2000 gallons a month. You could save what's a range again. How much would you save uh, per month? Three, $350 a month per truck. Wow. Per month per truck. Yep. So okay. that comes out to about $4,200 a year. And that's, you know, that's if the average of 15 to 20, I mean, that's specifically with the card that we, that we use. Dude, that's pretty serious savings. It definitely is. It definitely is. I do have a scenario that I can, that I could show you guys. Wow. I actually broke it down um, on our Facebook page and uh, I'll just say it out real quick. So I was talking to a guy that said that, you know, I don't use a fuel card. I'm only, I'm using um, my cash back on my credit card, 
right? So then I really broke down exactly how much of a difference that we would be able to save him. So just for round numbers, the guy said he was uh, getting 3% cash back. So on three cents, the average price for diesel fuel in March of 2019 was $3.07. That's, that's the national average. So if you're getting three cents back, you're really only saving nine cents a gallon, right? Mm -hmm. So, right. and that's, that's off the cash price. So if you ever realize that there's a difference at the right. pump between cash and credit, so a good fuel card is gonna get is gonna save you the twenty cents off a gallon, and that's gonna be off the cash price. So really, it could save you an additional. If you're paying with a credit card, hmm. you could save additional four to nine cents more. So you can use the fuel card and, and pay get, the cash rate and get the savings on top of it. And a lot of people don't know that. I did not know so, that, man. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So right there, say the difference is five cents between the cash price and the credit price. Right. Then you're really saving. That guy would be saving 14 cents off a gallon compared to his three cent, three percent cash back. So he had three trucks, and say he was, and he said he was doing about two thousand gallons in a month. So two thousand gallons times 14 cents came to eight hundred and forty dollars times that by 12 months that came to $10,080 in a year that he would have been saving when he thought in his mind that 3% cash back was the way to go until you break it down like that. You know, a lot of guys don't know and don't do, don't think of it like that. That is so, man, that is when you break it down, that's exactly how you can. I mean, you have to analyze the numbers. You have to break it apart and look at it, man. That makes a lot of sense. So, yeah. all right, so how does somebody sign up for one of these cards? What do you got to do? They just give me a call if you want to put my number down. I might, I'll might i say it out loud yeah. right here. Yeah. My number is 516-537-7254. Okay, we had a little bit of break up, um, and, that, and I think that was an internet thing on my end, which is interesting. So let's do that again. Five one six. I'm great. Five one six. Five three seven. Uh huh. Oh man, I'm having internet. Hold on, I'm having an internet. Seven two five four. Seven two. You've got to break it up too. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's 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 the it's wow. I'm, I'll tell you what. I'm hard. It might be me. I don't know. Well, I think it's me because it's both of us, and that's on my end. And um, like uh. No, that's definitely that's me. I'm I'm hard lined into the router right now. That's not good. That's bad. In fact, I think that's why there was a delay earlier. Oh wow, the screen's going crazy. So if you are if you're at home right now and you're having like a private rave, this will be perfect because the show is is kind of freaking out. But I'm adding the phone number, Justin five one six five three seven seven two five four. Right. Seven two five four. Okay, that's right. All right. So what I'm gonna do is yeah. I'm no. gonna, wow. Let's say it. Dylan says that savings incredible. Um, let's see here. Here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna exit. And and oh man. Okay. I'm gonna. I'm going to just, I'm going to minimize the screen so that, oh, and I think that's actually helped. I minimize the screen so that, um, so the internet, I don't want the poor internet to choke on me. So the poor. A lot better. Right. I, I think it is better. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, uh, that math and I'm going to, I'm going to do that. And now you can still see it. Okay. So we're still here. Whew, that was a close one, man. It was like Starship Enterprise, and the ship rocked, and the Klingons were shooting at us. <laughs> so, um, all right, Justin, you're at 516-537-7254. That's right. And let's get an email address for you, too. Justin? Yeah, sure. You can do it at uh, truckersadvantage oh. uh -huh. at gmail.com. Truckersadvantage at gmail.com. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. 
And so, all right, so let's say they contact you. What happens next? Sure. Just I need the application filled out and then copies of all owner's driver's licenses and avoided check. Um, and I'll go into a little more detail on the card as well. Um, okay. It's an EFS card. So anywhere EFS is accepted, you, know, you can use the card. So even though you only get the discounts at those three stations, if you fuel up at Pilot or Flying J, you could still use the card, but you just don't get the discounts. Uh um, okay, and we got a question. Can you use the card at the pump, or do you have to go to prepay inside? Good question. No, at the pump. At the pump. Cool, Rod. So pump. you're at the pump on this thing. Um, and let's see here. I need help with normal rates for one car. Oh, he's looking to move a car. Okay, cool. So, all right, so that is the fuel card. Mm hmm. Okay. And it's a it's a little different. Also, it's a weekly line of credit. OK. OK. So basically every Monday you get invoiced for the amount of gallons purchased. And then every Tuesday they deduct it out of your account. And then you get that rebate applied to your first week of the month's invoices. So you get that credited back to the first week of the following month. OK. OK. So a lot of people like the weekly line of credit gives them a little, you know, flexibility so that, you know, a lot of the cards you have to prepay. And especially with the company coming in, you know, it, you have to pay for the authority insurance. Oh, if man. you're not driving the truck themselves, then you're paying for the driver and the plates. So, you know, a lot of times when you're just getting into the business and you have to prepay a card, I mean, that's an extra expense that they never thought that they really needed to incur. So having a weekly line of credit gives them a little more flexibility that is cool man that's awesome hey only ramsey you're good man any participation is good participation okay so that's the fuel card program and, mm -hmm. and how long does it take to get signed up and approved uh after you get approved it's about seven to ten business days okay so it's something you you pretty much want to you're planning your business or maybe you're already going but go ahead and get signed up as soon as possible so you can start saving as soon as possible yeah. Yeah. And, awesome. and if anyone, I mean, I've, I've signed up companies with seven or eight trucks. So, you know, if you, if you want me to actually break down for you exactly the differences, because the only fee that this card incurs is an 85 cents every time you swipe the card. So an 85 cents per transaction, okay. there's other cards out there that, you know, are $3 for every swipe. So if you have 10 cars, 10 trucks, and you add up those $3 every swipe, I mean, that saves you another few hundred bucks a month. So, I mean, there's a lot of different things that you can compare apples to apples and break it down, you know. So if anyone wants to send me their report of how many gallons they purchase or anything like that, then I can break it down for them. Oh, nice. So right. Makes that, sense. Makes, that makes sense. So it, let's say you're on the fence on this. Go ahead and give you a call, send you an email. And you'll take a look at it and analyze the situation. You can make a determination. Exactly. You want to do whatever is best for, for the carrier. So, I mean, if it doesn't make sense, then keep on doing what you're doing. That's awesome. Man. Exactly. You know what? We say the same t thing at CTS. Listen, if you've already got something that's working for you, don't change anything. Right. But if you think you can improve your situation, let us know. Let's take a look at it exactly exactly and that you know what's cool is that I, i'm glad that i can have you on the show to talk about this because again at matt's i, I mean I, I saw you working one-on-one -on -one with people and now here we can get the message out this will be on demand you know right now we're live then it'll be on demand and you know hopefully this video can help you love it i appreciate it very much yeah cool man so let's talk about factoring because you know i I don't know. Help me out. What do we do with factoring? Why right. why so, factor and how do we do it? Factoring is is to keep up with your cash flow. So, you know, there's not many factoring companies out there that will actually factor for car hauling. It's, you know, it's a little more on the riskier side. Um, I used to work for a factoring company and we and we never touched it. A anytime someone said they're a car, car hauling. Hauler, yeah, car hauling. We would we we would just say it was all general freight. So we do work with a company called JD Factors. Okay. They've been around for 30 plus years. They're awesome customer service and they, I wouldn't say specialize in it, but I mean, they're very good at it. 
And they're our number one, you know, car hauling, factoring, factoring company that we work with. Cool. And so, yeah. all right. So then factoring, and I know this was explained to me. I think I understand how it works, but go ahead and walk us through what is factoring as opposed to not factoring. Sure. Well, factoring is when you get, when you have an invoice. So say when you deliver, sorry, I'm getting all these messages. Yeah, of course, man. Hey man, that's you awesome. Hear- that's I don't correct. even know how to take them off my screen. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, guys. <laughs> oh, man. Hold on. <laughs> oh. T- <laughs> but, uh, sorry about that. That's great. Um, so, factoring is when you have an invoice and you, uh, instead of waiting the 30 to 60 to 90 days to get paid from the customer, the factory company will buy that invoice, charge 3%, on that invoice and then wait to collect from the customer. So, you know, when it comes to car hauling factoring, that's not, there's not many companies that, that do it. A lot of the people, like if I'm moving from New York to Florida and I need my, my one car hauled, you know, the factoring company isn't going to factor my invoice because I'm just a regular Joe Schmo. Right. I don't have any business credit. They, they have no collateral or anything to come after me. So the only way that they're going to approve you and buy that invoice is if you're an actually established company, like a, um, you know, a, a used car lot or Hondas and, and Mercedes, and they need their cars shipped from, you know, comes off the port and they need it shipped four states in. Those are the companies that JD Factors is going to approve. So like the approval process is very simple. It's very quick. You just need to provide the company's name and the company's physical address and how much you plan on factoring with them a month. And you'll know in minutes if they're approved or not. Now, I knew like I knew a nine car hauler that he had been in business for a few years and he was working with uh, companies that were moving like nine car cluster loads, full loads. And but the problem was with the maintenance cost on the truck. He just could not wait the 30 plus days to get paid by the broker. So he was looking for a factoring company. I talked to some factoring companies, but yeah, we couldn't find anybody that could really sign him up and help him out. He just yeah. couldn't wait that long for, you know, load after load. He couldn't wait on the money. JD factors is really the only company that I've came across that actually markets and advertises that they accommodate for that. So it's something that they're aggressively going after. I mean, they've been around for 30 years. It's, uh, you know, it's a great company to be with. And, you know, like you said, you don't have to factor everything. So if you start coming up and you don't need to wait and you can wait 30 days, you don't have to factor everything. It's really a safe haven to be able to get money quick whenever you deliver the load. And and also on that, because that was one of the problems, one of the factoring companies I talked to, this is kind of the beginning of the bad taste in my mouth was that I found out and I didn't find it out. You know, it wasn't a real straightforward deal. I found it out in the fine print that he had to factor everything Everything. for like the next three years. I'm like, dude, he can't afford that either. There's, there's a lot of shady factoring companies out there. I mean, I've seen factoring companies. I've been in the factoring world for like five years and I've seen that companies put carriers out of business yeah. strictly to abide the contract. Yeah. I mean, that that's why you, you have to. I mean, unless you know how to read contracts and you're actually going to read them, because I can't tell you how many people just like sign them, have no clue what they signed. And because, I mean, when starting a trucking company, you're, you're doing so much paperwork. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. everyone thinks that they get into the industry, they buy a truck. And then, you know, they, they apply for their authority and then they get in the truck and where's the money? Right. Cold bars. I mean, you, got, you have to get set up with so many different services, insurance, fuel cards, oh, factoring, man. ELDs, drug consortium. roadside assistance, oh, yeah. compliance, yeah, drug consortium, you know, all the permitting, fuel tax reporting. I mean, there's so many oh, things that gosh. a trucking company has to do. It's, you know, it, it really is. If you don't have someone to help you and that's the reason why we do what we do is because we were lucky enough to have made the contacts in the industry so that we can make it easier for the people that are just getting into it instead of failing once or instead of wasting three years and suffering 
and not making the money that they should have because they didn't have the right guidance. And then, you know, we basically streamline that for them and get them on the fr- on, you know, on their feet correctly right away. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So, all right, so you got the fuel cards, you got the factoring. What other primary services do you think might be interesting? I know I had somebody talking about roadside assistance. Is that something also? Yeah, absolutely. We got a roadside assistance partner. They're called Rig Nation. Um, it's pretty cool. They basically charge you $49 a month, all right? And that covers all these things. It covers flat tire assistance, tire replacement. I got. I can't even remember them because I, I got to look them up. I mean, right those there. tow truck fees could be a killer. Does it help with that? I mean, I've I've had so many people that I've talked to about it. I've mentioned it to them. I've recommended it. And then they contact me two months later and say, I just got stuck in a ditch and had to pay, you know, huh. $1,500 huh. to get to get taken out. Right. So, I mean, to, to be comfortable and know that you're going to be, cur- you know, good for all these things. So look, it covers tire replacement, fluid and water delivery. You do have to pay for the the actual product, right? So if, sure. they, yeah. if they deliver you oil, I've had to have that conversation a few times. Some people just think that they're going to get, you know, 10 gallons for free also. Yeah. So you just got to be very, it's very thorough. Triple when A's the same way. It. Triple A, which I would never have be with that. Since I drive a car, I got to have triple A. And, yeah. And I mean, if, they, if I need a new battery, I have to pay for the battery. It's not free. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, fuel delivery, winching, lockout replacement key, oh, yeah. battery assistance. Oh, yeah. So there's eight things right there that I announced. They allow you to have one instance of those eight things once a week. What? Once a oh week. Oh my gosh, that's amazing! So I can get, I can lock my keys out of my car this week, every week, and then <laughs> next week I can have them deliver me oil, and then the following week I can have everything. Wow. It's crazy! Wow, for one flat monthly fee, forty nine dollars. That is insane, dude! Oh yeah. my gosh, that is awesome. Yeah, it's called the company's called Rig Nation. Wow. You can look them up. If you want more information, you can contact me and I can, you know, send you the flyers and get you set up if you're interested, give you a little more in-depth uh, detailed description. Man, that's awesome. Okay, so the number again is 516-537-7254. Your email is truckersadvantage at gmail.com. And we're talking about if you have questions about fuel cards, if you have questions about factoring, if you have questions about roadside assistance, is there mm-hmm. anything else you wanted to mention? I would say uh, our our other partner is called Fleet Shield. Oh, right. They're our e-log, our e-log and trucking technology partner. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at that because what's cool is, and we were talking about this earlier, is that, um, yeah, Michael with Fleet Shield, we saw yep. him at, he, he was at Matt's. Yep. And um, this is something that uh, they already put together. So you can go to, what's the site here? This is Fleet. Yep. Fleet. Dash shield. Yeah. Dot com forward slash ATI. And, you know, see, if you get it through the, they get signed up through this link. If they go through that URL right there, through Auto Transport Intel's landing page, you actually get um, a free dash cam for every truck that gets signed up to their service. So if you scroll wow. down, yeah, and it's great. It's no contract like right there. Those are all the services, the main services that, um, you know, Fleet Shield provides. And another good thing that I really like, their customer service is amazing because when you call, if your driver is out at 2.30 in the morning on a Friday night and he gets pulled over for something, or gets into an accident or anything like that, he can, instead of calling the dispatcher or instead of calling the owner the owner and waking him up, if he doesn't know how to pull up his logbook or anything, they can call the 1-800 number, and it's only an eight-second um, hold time. 
and they are American based. So I know a, lot, a few of the other companies out there that are, uh, you know, competitors in the industry, they outsource their customer service care. So you're talking to someone that is going to take 15 to 15 minutes to answer the phone, but then, you know, they might not, you might not be able to understand them too much. The, the, you know, sometimes the fact is that when you need assistance like that, because man, if you need ELD assistance, you don't have any time to mess around. Right. Man. Right. It, and yeah. That's, that's a, that's a, that's pretty cool. So this is, yeah, yeah this is the Fleet Shield. Okay. So this is, Geotab is the ELD connected to Fleet Shield, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Fleet Fleet Shield's the reseller and and customer service representative. Yeah. Cool. Now, I'm glad you brought this up. So, what was that about the dash cam again? So, if you sign up through this link, they're giving away uh, free dash cams right now. So, if you have five trucks or whatever, five, three trucks, you're getting into the business, you don't have an ELD provider yet, and you're looking for a dash cam. I mean, dash cams are, they can save your, save your butt when you're uh, getting into an accident, right, for insurance purposes. So dash cams are, are pretty important to have on your, on your vehicle, just, you know, for protection of yourself, um, if anything happens, plus, you know, you're getting it for free. So I think it's about $150 value of a dash cam. So if you're signing up three trucks um, to their service, then you're going to get three dash cams. So, Dude, no way. Cool. That, no way. A dash cam per truck? Per truck. That's crazy. Wow. Per truck. Wow, yeah. man. Wow. Awesome guys over there, too. Michael yeah. Cook and Justin Watkins. Awesome guys. Yeah, Michael Cook. Um, yeah, Michael was also with us at Matt's. And yep. um, yeah, man, just really helpful. Lots of information. That is awesome, dude. So, okay, yeah, cool. Just trying to uh, partner with the best companies that we can find. I mean, anyone that's, you know, involved in our movement and, and truly caring about the truckers. I mean, that's who we're, we're partnering with. So it's uh, it's a nice little community that we got growing. All right, man, that is, you know, that's awesome information. Um, where the, you mentioned, okay, that's four things. Fuel card, factoring, roadside, and ELD. Is there anything else we should know about? I mean, how much time do you have? <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's take another five minutes. This is great stuff, <laughs> right. man. We got um, commercial fleet data systems. They're, um, they're a compliance and safety um, company that we work with, and we're actually doing a live demo tomorrow. We have uh, we have a Facebook group called Shaggy's Consulting and Training Group. Um, it's catered more to the you know general freight side of the industry, um, yes. but we do you know we do we do have all of our partners on there that um, that go on. And, you know, if you could do a demo, they'll do a demo, and they're having one tomorrow. I mean, compliance and safety is one of the most overlooked components of the industry. I mean, I was just Correct. talking to um, the owner of CSDS the other day, and he was telling me how some of these companies are getting just wrapped up with thirty-two, dollars $56,000 fines, and they oh go out of God. business because they go through an audit. They don't have their books together correctly. They, I mean, it is just, I mean, I don't even know a lot about that whole compliance aspect wow. and I'm really interested in learning more. Yeah. I just know that their their software can literally do every single thing that you can think of for you. I mean, when if your driver, you enter in all the driver's information and if their driver's license is expiring, it'll notify you. I mean, right. crazy, crazy th stuff like that, that, I mean, unless you have a software that that has all of that tracked then you know it's very easily to get you know pushed right. underneath the, right. the table that's the fleet management software yeah so yeah. if you're a fleet and you're looking for some fleet management software information truckers advantage at gmail.com you want to talk to justin yeah yeah that's awesome that is that's all okay is there anything else <laughs> i know I'm, i love what? to see that you are uh with the uh -oh. evil oh, I know. process servers, she is, she's a sweetheart, so she, she's uh, she'll be able to help you with all your. All right, so I okay. Here's what I did: is I minimized the window. And and uh, yeah. Diane will pick up the 
Oh yeah, so okay, so you know, right? Of course, you know Penny at Evil Sizer. She was at the Mid America Truck Show, and so yep. you're also familiar. You know PFA. Yep. Pacific oh. Financial we use them for our broker bonds. Yeah, exactly, man. They are a wealth of information. I can't wait yeah. to. Have, they're going to be on the show next week, dude. Nice. I'm looking forward to watching. No, it's going to be so informative because they're talking about the BMC 34, BMC 35. Or is mm -hmm. it 84 and 85? 85. Yeah, 84, 85. 84 and 85, which are yep. your broker uh, surety forms and broker bond. And it gets all into the legal side of brokering. And the man, there's, and it, there's, it's, you know, what's really interesting is I think it's the BMC 84 where uh, if you, if you're a carrier and you want to also broker loads, which is a, pretty normal part of when you develop your customer base and you've got sure. loads that you can't physically move you need to have you need to have that form so you can legally do it yeah otherwise it's a federal problem and you really don't need a new another federal problem do you right you'd be out of business <laughs> yeah. real quick no you don't need another federal problem so um it is pretty amazing it's be really informative i'm looking forward to yeah. the show i mean there, there's so many different things and different services in this industry that it's impossible to know everything about everything, you know. That's why you just got to get a few of the people that are, you know, very, very knowledgeable in the industry in their type of niche, and you know, exactly. they'll explain everything thoroughly. Because I mean, it's there's so much different, <laughs> so much different things out there to to know, and the rules and regulations, especially with e logs. I oh mean, yeah. Exactly. It's a lot. So I and I, you know, I appreciate you bringing them them up because I want to say if they're watching right now that I appreciate that companies like PFA and Evil Sizer and Sun Country Trailers uh, see the potential here that you know we're really providing a service of information to the car hauling industry and in return I can help spread the message of them sure. helping individual businesses. It's awesome. Uh, really, it's amazing. I'm so thankful for that. I'll be getting more to help you, dude. All right, yeah, double thumbs up, man. I'll, I'll give you the, uh, I'll it. give you the siren <laughs> and. <laughs> oh, you've been drinking. I got my ELD Kool Aid. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> hey, if you're gonna be on the road, you better have your ELD Kool Aid. <laughs> in fact, That's awesome. My, uh, in fact, as I before I hooked up, you know, and had somebody to really help me out. And I had the ELD egg timer, you know, um, that thing. It, <laughs> wow. Yeah. The <laughs> ELD egg. So listen, if you don't have any ELD, at least have ELD egg timer. Egg timers. Right. It'll, I mean, the cop might allow it. Who knows? <laughs> you might just want to just get out of here. You'll be and go sitting home. there. Let's see. Well, officer, let's see. I still have, according to this, I yeah. still have, I got five more minutes to get home. Oh, I have six minutes to get home, officer. Yeah. Hey, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll put that up there, and then I'll know when the laundry's done. Okay. Well, listen, man, I really appreciate you coming on the show, taking the I time. I appreciate you having me. Yeah. I, know I, uh, I know you asked me a few months to, months ago to come on but i think this was a much better time well it timing is everything and the truth is that uh i'm really lucky you came on to the show tonight because this next several weeks are booked up and there's more and more folks getting in line to get on the show and be a part of this so man i, I really appreciate you doing this it was short notice yeah. i told you was a friday yeah yeah so yeah. you know that means a lot listen it means a lot and i'm telling the rest of the industry you don't, even if you don't have a lot of lead time, but you need Justin's help, man, give him a call at 516-537. Oh, I got five minutes. 7254. 516-537-7254. <laughs> or send mm -hmm. him an email, truckersadvantage at gmail.com. Yep. And let, that's it. Let, and we're also, if, uh, you know, if we don't have any other, if we don't have any car haulers, or if we have general freight haulers, on here as well um my business partner shaggy does one-on-one -on -one consulting if you need help with your business there um you know not so much the car hauling but the the other side of it so if anyone's on here that needs help on that cool. we'll be happy to help okay cool man and, and we'll be uh this is a plug for shaggy's shaggy's 
What what days is he live on Facebook? Tomorrow night, Wednesday night at seven. Okay. So if they if they join the group Shaggy's Consulting and Training Group, mm-hmm. that's uh, join it. Well, uh, it's a wealth of information on there. We do uh, Facebook Live videos. I mean, like I said, tomorrow is the one with Commercial Fleet Data Systems, the compliance software. Um, Penny has done um, Facebook Live videos on there. Michael with Fleet Shield. So we really try to put out as much information in their sector of the industry on there so that everyone isn't just, uh, you know, in the blind. Okay, so I'm putting it in the notes there. Wednesdays at 7, Shaggy's Consulting and Training Group on Facebook. And I really appreciate Shaggy letting me join the booth there at the Mid-America Truck Show 2019. That was awesome. Of course. We'll do it again next year. All right, that sounds good, man. Listen, thanks for taking the time to be on the show. Thanks for helping drivers out there. And um, listen, guys, stick around because I got another uh, word from Sun Country Trailers. And then we're going to be back with the Auto Auction Live panel. Thank you, Justin. We'll be in touch soon. Okay, buddy? Thank you so much. Love what you're doing. Keep it up. Thank you so much. Talk to you later. At Sun Sun Country Country Trailers, Trailers, we're committed committed to manufacturing manufacturing durable durable car car haulers haulers that get get the the job done done safely safely and efficiently. efficiently. Our, Our skilled, skilled team, team hand builds each, each next, next generation, generation anniversary, anniversary edition five, five car hauler using, using precision, precision cut parts, parts for industrial, industrial strength, strength and, and ease of loading, loading ensuring, ensuring premium, premium quality you can, you rely, can rely on. on. It's low, it's profile, low profile, star punched punch flooring, flooring, hydraulic, hydraulic systems, systems, and three point ratchet, ratchet straps, straps allow, allow for safe, safe and easy, easy loading, loading while, while the tube frame, frame and, and powder coat finish provide unmatched durability. The angled curve at the front of this car carrier allows for more room in the first two positions. Designed for moving minivans, SUVs, and crossovers, the additional space also allows for more creative loading. There are a wide variety of optional upgrades to choose from, such as heavy-duty ramps, LED light packages, flip-out extensions, and more to create the perfect hauler for every job. Whether you're hauling regionally or nationally, low profile or high profile, trust Sun Country Trailers to go the distance. Learn more online at suncountrytrailers.com. Or give us a call at 866-887-2453. All right. Thank you so much, Sun Country. So listen, I am... uh, What we're going to do next is... Let's do this. I'm going to have... We're going to do a live panel discussion about auto auctions in the near future... And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to send out a couple more emails. Um, I'm going to get this thing going here. And I think our first guest is going to be Nick. And um, and then we're going to be joined by... I'm going to let him, I'm going to let him join here quickly first. And then I'm going to bring in a couple more folks. But I want, to, I want to let Nick have the first bite at the apple. The reason for this is I didn't just decide that I wanted to talk about auto auctions... Nick had a Facebook post that he had uh, he had something to say about auto auctions and the near future and dealerships and he's not the only one you know it's been it's been getting talked about um, quite a bit and as far as it, the reason this is important is that the business model is changing and when business models change that affect your business model it's something you want to pay attention to. Hey, Nick, can you hear me and see me okay? I've got two windows popping up for you. So uh, I'm not sure which one's going to come through. And while you're doing that, um, let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have uh, Ty join us. And then I've got I've also got Ziggy and Jason waiting in the wings here. But I've got, can you see me and hear me okay, Nick? I hear you. You hear me. But you can't see me. Yeah, I can see oh, you as well. You can hear me and see me. Awesome. You hear me well? Yes, I can hear you and see you. All right, cool. So I just I just set that up. So you put on Facebook, and by the way, Nick, you are tell me your association with Go For It app. Uh yes, uh, my name is Nick Avaliani. I'm a CEO of Go For It Systems. And turn, turn your, can you turn that mic up a little bit? Do you have a little more volume on there? Well, not sure. Yeah, turn that up for me. Better. Yeah. One, two, three. Great. One, two, three. Yeah, great. Okay, great. 
Okay, my name is Nick Avaliani. I'm CEO uh, of Go For It Systems, the company that initiated Go For It app that helps transporters uh, to do uh, inspection, vehicle inspection. Practically, it's uh, electronic bill of lading. And also, uh, soon we are launching uh, dispatch system. All right, that's pretty cool. So, and what what did you say on Facebook? And what, by the way, while I'm doing that, I want to welcome Ty of CTS. Ty is with us. Hello. Hey guys, Ty, you also like to talk about auto auctions. So, Nick, what, what's going on? What was this Facebook post that you put up there? And why are we talking about it? Okay, so um, uh, me and my partners, we are in the auto hauling business for some time. And we, uh, we are watching uh, the auto transport trends and also uh, watching, uh, w watching. I don't know if you can, I don't know if, can you hear me and you're, can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes, I do. Okay. So um, uh, the post that I made on Facebook, uh, we are watching uh, that uh, the electronic auctions are on the rise. If you have uh, noticed that trend, um, uh, more uh, more vehicles are sold uh, electronically. For example, there is such company ACV Auctions that tripled uh, auto sales through online uh, marketplace. So, uh, what ACV Auctions offer um, dealers and car buyers is uh, the electronic auction where dealer does not have to send vehicle to some designated area. For example, uh, Mannheim, Pennsylvania or Odessa, Odessa in Framingham, Massachusetts. Uh, there was a common practice, right? The dealers, uh, if they cannot sell car to someone, private person, they we are usually sending those vehicles to uh, designated areas such as Mannheim, this and other auctions but now acv auction that is um and there is also smart auction as i as i'm aware of but acv auction pretty much grew pretty quickly they tripled uh, their sales in march this year from uh, march last year and my uh, partners who are in auto transport business they all they increased um volume from such uh, from such marketplace for example i will tell you uh if it makes any um indication i'll tell you that um i employ four truckers in my business and this year none of them have been in Mannheim, pennsylvania none of them last year uh before april or before may they went there for at least 20 25 times but this year they have never been there because uh, all their auto transport volume came from ACV auctions and the companies like that. So my Facebook uh, posting that kind of alerted you, which was uh, absolutely uh, right. And uh, uh, because I, I noticed that trend is coming. Um, I noticed a trend is coming that uh, auto transport business will also probably will change because more hotshot uh, truckers will be involved in this business because now the vehicles are sold on the dealership premises, on dealership uh, yards, and uh, uh, more one one by one pickups happen more often than uh, picking up whole nine car load at one place. So that was my um, my uh, kind of catch of this trend that this is gonna just grow um, this year and the next year it will be probably much more and um, auto transporters will lease, will receive loads in future from such places rather than the used car market has grown uh, this year uh, sales, even more it's not yet published but uh, i'm guessing uh, it will be much more more than 40 million used car vehicles um, was we are sold uh, last year and 17.6 million new cars. so we're taking on water here again there's some kind of internet thing uh, going on so do, do uh, this i'm gonna <laughs> was that new car market would oh and we have ziggy joining us okay so here's what i want to do before 
Uh, and Ziggy, welcome to the show. And I know it's kind of, the internet's going a little crazy here, but we're going to be okay. We're going to make it. Ty, will you chime in on... There you go. Hey, and this, Ziggy's here. So, Ziggy, welcome to the show. Um, but before, what I want to do is, Ty, I want to ask you, what do you think of what Nick said and how that's going to impact, or how it's impacting us? I mean, what, what do you think, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I saw his post, too, on Facebook, and I, I sent it to you. I couldn't believe it. I finally, I think he's absolutely right. I think it's paramount that we all pay attention to trends. I mean, the, the one, it's perplexing for sure, because you don't know, you know, like, Nick, do you guys have direct customers, or do you get all your loads off of load boards? Uh, yeah, we usually... Most of the time, we use uh, the load boards. Okay, uh, interesting. Was I disconnected? Yeah, well, and that's where, where... Now, I'm still here, and I can see, and I can hear you. So you're still with us. What's interesting is, Ty, when he says the load boards, what, what do you, what's your first thought? Because that's where ACV Auctions is posting. It's on Central Dispatch. Right, as well. A small as, portion of them. A small, okay. Thank you, Ziggy. What? Yeah. Why don't you chime in? Since you know, oh, and we got man, we got. <laughs> we got. I got. Nick's got three windows, but that's okay, Nick. Everybody else only has one. Nah, I'm just kidding. So, Ziggy, tell us more. You know something about this? ACV is only posting what they don't have relationships to handle. If they know somebody handles a lane, then they would assign it directly or they'll try their carrier base with emails first prior to putting it on central. Which is normally what a broker, most brokers of, of size and experience are going to do something similar to that, right? They're going to go to their preferred network and then if they can't get it, when it's a truly a leftover, they drop it on central. Is that right? In my viewpoint, yes. What do you think of that, Ty? You think there's truth to that? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So where is the change? If we already knew that, where is the change from? I mean, because that's our, that's our, that's the way it's always been. Where's the change? What's new? Uh, the new is uh, volume is increasing. Um, as I told you, if my company can be uh, used as an example, um, a lot of my uh, drivers we are hanging out in auctions like Mannheim or odessa and now a, mo a lot of uh, volume comes from uh, acv load board and uh, uh so the volume decreased from coming from regular auctions that we know uh Mannheim or odessa and the acv auction share in my transportation uh volume has increased dramatically as they increased also uh, their sales, they they sold 5,000 units last year in March 2017. Now they sold 15,000 units in March 2018. Do you, hey, Nick. Yeah, there you go. I've got a question for Nick. I was wondering, so prior to going, when, say, last year, your, your guys are hanging out at the auctions, and you got a nine car haulers, is that right? No, actually not. Uh, and this is a good question. Um, we have uh, three, four, and five car haulers. Um, and yeah, we are basically hot shotting. So this ACV auction trend was uh, very beneficial for hot shot uh, truckers because... Yeah. Um, now that I agree with 100%. That's where yes. it's at. Yes. So uh, yeah, my uh, Facebook post was, uh, was also about it, partially that uh, hot shot truckers will benefit as more online auction uh, volume increases because the dealers don't have to send uh, vehicles to <clears throat> some designated area. They are selling one by one. And the dealers, they come from places like uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, uh, the places where uh, hot shot truckers love to go and pick up the vehicles one by one. Cool. Because, yeah, because you usually... About that, Ziggy? What? The, that the, his guys were three, four, and five car trailers. Is that right, Nick? Yes. 
Yeah, I heard that. So they're not going to the auctions anymore. They're picking up at the dealer's lots. So I'm wondering um, where the stingers I don't are. know that they're not going to auctions anymore because I'm down in Bordentown every week, and I see Cicero here in Syracuse where I live. There's hot shots all over. And, again, there's a huge difference between a hot shot, per se, and a car hauler. So each market being different, I know that a lot of the big car haulers are not interested in the singular moves. And I really believe that there's going to be a whole lot more of ACV-type auctions, but I don't know that ACV will – be the biggest by any means. But my question, what I wonder about the whole, the topic, how are dealers handling ETAs? Are the ETAs still good, Nick? Um, yes. Um, with this uh, hot shot trucking, uh, the ETAs uh, uh, are pretty much um, pick up today, deliver tomorrow basis. So you're staying um, in a 200 mile circle probably? Uh, 300 maybe yeah 250 300 miles and uh, the this type of auctions uh yeah if the um uh the people who are buying from uh, like on the auction like acv most of them are not too far from a dealer uh where they are buying from um of course the acv has some few loads like that it's going to uh cross country, but uh, they are just few. Um, on the East Coast, uh, which is a lot of a lot of dealers are in small, um, under 500 radius, there are a lot of dealers, uh, unlike in places like uh, Arizona or Texas or New Mexico. So um, in this uh, area, um, the hotshot truckers have a lot of loads coming from, uh, that, that is going 200 miles 250, 300 miles. And, um, and yes, the uh, ETAs, they love ETA, ACV ETAs as well because it's uh, pick up today, deliver tomorrow basis. Cool. That makes sense. So, in essence, I mean, Ziggy, I want to I go back to what you were talking about. Do, do you think that a nine car is going to be more focused on OEM where, I mean, you've got a full load every time around, whereas in this more of a digital auction future, it's more of a hot shot situation that would make more sense with the ones and twos happening. Um, I don't run new car freight. Okay. And I have six stinger trucks and two four car rollbacks and I go where the volume is just like everybody wants the volume one pick one drop. Of course, it's, it's easier. It's more efficient operations. There's a lot of reasons for that, but the problems that they've seen in the past with the type of auction ACV is doing, um, they tried to do it in the repo industry where they sold the vehicles right off the repossessors lots and it, it tanked. They couldn't get trucks in and out on a reasonable amount of time. They didn't have dependable transporters at that time that could handle that type of business. There were a lot of reasons that it failed, but it did fail. Um, I see the auctions in general being Mannheim and Odessa being obviously the elephants in the room. Um, both are investing heavily on going to a digital sale. Um, I've heard estimations from people that uh, approximately 30 to 40% of the brick and mortar auctions will not exist in 10 years. They may be marshalling yards. They may be sold to Walmart for a location. Who knows? But I've heard that with people buying cars electronically, which I don't know what the numbers are exactly. I've heard about 20% are now buying online. So they're not going to the physical brick and mortar auctions, but they are buying from them online now. Do you, so it's it's going to change dramatically. Do you see that affecting you? Does that affect your personal business at all? Um, there will be more buyers in each lane because a guy can sit in front of a screen and bid on 30 cars in 30 lanes at once per se versus being physically at the auction. They can only bid on two lanes at a time standing in the middle of two lanes. So I, I don't see it affecting me much negatively, but I agree with the hot shots easier in and out of some of these smaller lots. Um, 
like I said, everybody's got a business plan. It's not mine, but I also right. think there's a huge difference in a hot shot operation versus a larger car haul situation. And may, so maybe one of the more immediate effects is uh, one of the more immediate effects would be that if you are building a business and if you're building a hot shot business, this is actually an opportunity. <coughs> to build your business with folks that have, have changed their auction bidding business models. Would that be true? It's more the sellers that you're servicing by being able to access in and out like that. Um, some of the problems that they've experienced in the past that I've heard of is you may pick up at a dealership that has great parking, great in and out and great hours, but you don't know what your drop off is on each, each, location right. um just because just because i'm open certain hours and you can pick up and drop off what are the policies of each yard you're dealing with well and there you and that great that's where the technology that creates huge disconnect the technology on the driver's side needs to improve to tie into the technology on the purchasing side right now it would be nice if somebody were to compile data of that sort, but it would be a huge undertaking based on participation. Oh, if only somebody would build this great software. <laughs> Not me. Hmm. There, there are things in the works. I know that um, there are a couple different uh, broker type, and that, that's for lack of better terminology, um, things that are being introduced into the industry by some very, very, very well-financed people will say, and almost an Uber type of situation for auto transport is now being tested that I'm that, very aware of. That's exactly, uh, that's a very interesting point because uh, Uber uh, has introduced uh, their platform quite recently, maybe two years ago, and they didn't touch auto transport industry because uh, they, they, all, they only made a uh, platform for regular freight. And uh, they are doing pretty good, by the way. Uh, all other Uber products had uh, incurred loss uh, last year. The only, only product that actually made a profit was Uber Freight, which is for truckers. But they didn't touch auto transport, and that is the reason why they didn't, because um, uh, auto transport is very different animal from regular freight. You know, we are truckers, right? We are auto haulers. And um, very specific, very complex. And uh, they might be uh, learning the industry, but until now, nobody has released actual platform, marketplace, Uber-like platform, or something where you can find loads that easy. Um, but this trend is coming because, as uh, as I told you and the uh, Obviously, you also agree that hotshot truckers are on the rise and the volume for them are on the rise because of ACV, because of smart auction, and probably there might be other uh, companies. Uh, several. Soon, um, yeah, several yeah, companies several. because these digital sales are on the rise in general. So there might be uh, platforms coming from for them, hotshot truckers. And also, probably all of you know that to start a hotshot uh, business, you don't need a commercial driver license. And actually, when I was comparing, uh, it's harder to become New York City Uber driver than to become hotshot car hauler, because I have done both. And uh, it's really, uh, you have to go a lot of regulations to become New York City driver. And it's much easier to become a hotshot truck uh, auto hauler. And uh, it pretty much uh, might be financially better decision for you to become hotshot uh, trucker because of these trends happening right now. Um, hey, you guys. I know the hotshot. Oh, go ahead. I'm no, sorry. Please, please, uh, please, Ziggy. Hotshot is largely overlooked right now by DOT. But just as everything else progresses in time, with the roadside cameras that are being used on the entry port states by the roadside cameras being tested all over the country right now. Um, I, I, my personal opinion is that hotshot's about ready to have some really serious difficulties. 
most of the hot shots that I see on a daily basis are not even close to DOT compliant. And they've always skated under the radar. And now with the car haulers getting the 80 foot exemption and the better financially backed organizations are pretty well represented on a legal basis and on other bases, I think that hot shot's going to be the easy pickings for the DOT as well as a lot of other things. So it's it only time will tell. So I want to say this as uh, Jason at Kendall Enterprises, you're with us, right? Yes, I'm there. All right, cool. So here's what I want to do is Jason, uh, I'm going to introduce you after this break, but I want to uh, what I want to do is I'm going to run uh, a quick mention from PFA Transportation Surety Insurance Services. And then I want you guys all to stick around because I, I can tell this is heating up a little bit. We got we have uh, the stage is set for some great conversation about hot shining and options in the near future. So please stick around. We're going to be right back. Maybe, Maybe the most, most important, important thing to think, think about, about is what's, what's going, going to destroy, destroy you. And that is where auto liability comes in. Some may argue that the freight broker is not responsible, but we see those claims happening. And, and there is some reality that it's there to protect, it's there to provide defense, and it's there to pay on their behalf. And that's keeping some of them alive, keeping them in business. The other part of your question, where's a good bang for the buck? Uh, one of the things that we run into a lot is just talking about contracts. And in a future episode, we'll cover contracts and contractual requirements. But I think a lot of freight brokers are frustrated with juggling the contractual issue, but also spending a lot of time, wasted time, on little claims that maybe arise out of the cargo side, and yet some of those can become significant. So bang for the buck, a lot of, of our customers are talking to us about cargo. There's special coverage forms, a variety of them, and that's what we hear ourselves finding to be a critical thing that we can help them. Gives them that bang for the buck that you're talking about. Okay, thanks for sticking around, everybody. Listen, I really appreciate it. Listen, if you just joined the show, we have another. We're going to go for another 30 minutes or so in the in the talking about auto auctions and uh, in the near future. And I've got Nick from Go For It App. I've got Ty from CTS Business Coaching. I've got Ziggy from IATA, Independent Auto Hauler Transporters Association, and I've got Jason from Kendall Enterprises. Um, Jason is also a car hauling YouTuber and Jason, I appreciate you sticking around and joining us for this conversation. Hey, not a problem at all. Thanks for having me, Jay. Cool. So, um, all right. So before we went to the break, we're talking about hot shotting. We're talking about auctions and changes. Jason, you, uh, I wanted to ask, is there anything you wanted to chime in about and add to our conversation? No, everybody's got some good points here. Um, the uh, the ACV auctions. I've actually been. I have a close relationship with a dealership uh, here in my town, and uh, they've been buying cars off from ACV auctions every day. Um, so it gives me less time on the load board because they just send me the vehicle release information, and they buy them in clusters. So I'm all I'm doing is filling to either go get them or you know, fill in the, the backhaul space or the deadhead space to go get them. Um, it's been great. So uh, I think the the smart auction and, you know, more online bidding is really, I think it's going to get more cars moving quicker, uh, which will keep us from sitting around more. And so in that case, are you using any technology to help you stay loaded or is it a phone call? How do you get those loads? Uh, it's just a phone call or a text message is all I'm getting from the, I It's an uh, ex-brother-in-law, so <laughs> he's got my cell phone number. So they are a pretty big Toyota dealership, and they have to they have guidelines to how many Toyotas they have to have on their lots as used cars. So they're constantly having to fill that you know that gap, uh, which is great for me. And um, ACV auctions is given dealerships a chance to buy uh, lease returns right off of wherever the vehicle was turned in from lease uh, without bouncing from an auction or um, 
you know, to another spot that it's going to be sold at. They're selling it right out of their, right out of their lot. Okay. And so that helps. Um, I mean, that speeds up the time frame. You know, one of the things that I was reading about with the digitization of the auctions that uh, companies like Cox are looking and are already investing more heavily in remarketing services, right? Rather than that being, uh, you know, that doesn't that save time if you've got the remarketing part, fat, you know, if you can speed that up too. Oh yeah, definitely. I know Ty's got something to say, but he's just not saying it. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Okay. I'm thinking Ziggy's got stingers, so I'm wondering where, because I like the people I've dealt with for 20 years, usually going by 30, 50, 60 cars at an auction. <clears throat> and I'm thinking, well, how do those guys get cars now? Well, consolidated buying, of course, is easier for a guy to go to an auction and pull 50 or 60 cars in certain ways. But when they have a specific buyer looking for a specific car, um, now you can find it so easily digitally. That's why, like I said, Mannheim and Odessa, which is Cox and Car Automotives, both are investing heavily, very heavily in the technology to do so. And to the point where there, there's discussions of how many of the brick and mortar auctions will exist in 10 years. Yeah. Did you read that article by Marianne Keller? Have you heard of her? I've heard of her. Even though it's the same last name, it's not part of my family. No, I didn't know that was your last name. <laughs> <laughs> she is not part of my family now. That's... But yes, I did I did see it. Wow. Yeah, that that's the one that got me spun up. Have you seen that one, Nick? Oh, I didn't. We'll email it to you later. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I was gonna say I could I could go searching for it, but there's no need to. But in in to sum it up, I mean, she's saying the same thing as that with the digitization of the auctions and less brick and mortar. I mean, it, this is a, I think the headline was auto auctions will change more in the next five years than they did in the last 20. Yeah. I well, in 20 that. years, they haven't changed really. Fair enough. But it seems like many things are on that level of accelerated change. Right. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I agree. Much, pretty much, uh, this is correct because uh, what's hap what happened in the uh, finance industry uh, seven, ten years ago, everything w became digitalized. Uh, this is now happening in uh, uh, auto hauling industry and in freight uh, transportation in general. Everything is being digitalized. And um, and uh, the market demands that because uh, we have two to three percent steady annual growth in car sales, used car sales. Uh, in 2013, there was just 30 million. Now it's more than 40 million. 10 million increase in from 2013 is quite large uh, volume. I mean, uh, 10 million cars additionally was so sold in this period. So of course this. Uh, um, this uh, positive trend requires a lot of digital products to come up and probably uh, we will witness uh, a lot of uh, such products coming up in uh, next few years. Probably, I would say uh, two years from now, this market will be completely different. What was As you were speaking before, though, with the, with the differences of car haul versus freight with the Uber freight situation, you have to remember that this has been attempted by uh, actual carriers, not just brokers, whether it be uh, Big Brown, UPS tried to do it, GE tried to do it, and they've never been successful in car haul because of specific needs of car haulers. So there's there's huge differences with car haul than anything else. And the product that I'm familiar with that is being tested, um, that's being tested by industry experts, and it is actually being used at a few auctions right now but that that I will see if I can get that guy on the show for you shortly. It's great. It's pretty impressive. Well, and it's very impressive. Given the given the additional many additional parameters of car hauling, it seems like it's going to be a hybrid solution for quite some time. 
to totally automate and digitize car hauling it i mean I, there's there's some things that may not even be able to be automated to some degree and i think that that's why I'll, i think a lot of people are still looking to see what hap what what will happen with convoy how much automation will be accomplished to keep dollars in the carrier's pockets keep the shippers happy keep everything running on time and to see what what will be the market penetration and saturation of the users of this solution because there's a problem i honestly yeah i honestly don't believe that there's any interest um or should i say very little interest in the carrier's profitability that's our own <laughs> well it's... personal problem the the larger companies whether it be car automotive or Mannheim, they need to feed the machine. They need to be leaders in remarketing. Um, three years ago, Mannheim did over 14 million sales across the block. I haven't heard any more current numbers, but that's going to continue to increase with the, they're the, they're the biggest by far. I mean, they, I believe are two and a half times the size of car automotive, which is Odessa. And if there's 40 million sales now, and they're two and a half times the size that 14 million would translate to 20 million sales that year. So if they're double, there's your numbers. Um, possibly, yeah, I mean, 28 million ish per se in the current times. But right now, the specific needs, if they can sell from a dealership's lot on a lease turn, and of course, it saves them transportation, it saves them the potential of damage, it saves them the auction fees. There's a tremendous amount of other things that are not even mentioned, but it's huge. If they don't have to have people at each one of these brick and mortar auctions, they don't have to have the drivers, the damages of each auction. Uh, it, it's just hugely incredible. The savings that can be made and still make the same amount of money on an electronic sale. And Ziggy, you've probably done this. I know I have you pick up a car at a dealership, take it to the auction. It sells. And then you pick it up the next day and take it back to where you just brought it brought it from it's happened repeatedly <laughs> and servicing repossession servicing repossession lots i've moved the same car six and seven times oh yeah yeah but you know i mean we got aoc with her new green deal so this could certainly help out the environment with oh no politics sorry family show <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> but important yeah. but very importantly if you have built your business around moving that same car six times and now it's not going to be six it's going to be four it's going to be three that's very important and i think i want to call attention that one of the very important things here is that no matter your business model and no matter what you think about aoc and the green deal and politics and the future of humanity there are changes coming and it's important to note right <laughs> well yeah yeah that's why I think it's so fun to have this show because really, you know, whether you're a three car, four car, five car hotshot, or you got a fleet of nine car stingers, it's going to definitely have an impact. I think to some degree on all of us and talking about it, I think might lighten the blow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We cannot, re we cannot get rid of the impact. Yeah. I don't but think we can maybe, we, we can minimize we can minimize impacts and we can change the direction of the impact that's based on the carriers and their education. Oh gosh. Um, and here's the, proof. it's, it's very, yeah, the proof, the proof is ELD. So many people said, I'm not going to worry about it. No, you know, this was happening in 2016, 2017. When people first heard of ELD, they said, Nope, not drinking the Kool-Aid. Look, Jay's drinking the right, Kool-Aid. Well, if you did drink the Kool-Aid, not only did it quench your thirst, but you were better prepared when the bathtub hit you. <laughs> it, it had zero effect on my business. Zero effect as far as, um, as far as profitability, as far as revenue, had zero effect. My drivers yeah, my, my are forced well. to sleep safely. They're forced to pull over and have a good night's sleep. They're forced to recharge their batteries. Is it at the perfect time clock? Of course not. Are they groggy sometimes because the bitch in the box said, wake up? Of course. 
Did they want to drive an extra 30 minutes? Well, we all know what personal conveyance is. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, there's, there's a lot of differences. And of course, there's people listening to your show for audit purposes on trucking companies. There's a lot of aggravation out there and we can believe all the negativity we want. But until we teach each other the true cost of doing business, which I believe um, Ty and Jay, you guys work on that a little bit now? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It, until we teach each other the true cost of doing business, a guy thinks he can use his girlfriend's dually because she <laughs> is a horse lover and he puts a car trail in front of him. He thinks he's in business. He doesn't realize the true cost of doing business. And the majority of hot shots, the majority of car haulers all fail because they don't know. Yeah. So when you think you're making a great living at $300 a day, well, if you knew the true cost of doing business and you were to work within that realm, you'd made six or 700 that day. Right. So, it's all relational. Yeah. So the picture I have in my head, uh, Ziggy, is a, the National Geographic episode with the big whale. Yeah, right? Yeah, so the big whale's cruising down the ocean and he's got a bunch of these little fish all around him. I see the big whale is the stinger gang and the little fish are the three car gang. But the little fish are eating off the big whale, right? Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah. You know it's what? A, I don't have problems system. doing business with it's an I don't have problems doing business with guys that are doing it properly, no matter what they drive. Right. But yeah. they need to know their true cost of doing business. To spend eighty thousand dollars on a truck that is not functional in three years. Um, it, it's kind of hurtful to see guys go through that. They're busting their ass for their family and they're setting themselves up for failure if they don't understand the true costs. No, and if there's a way to educate them and network and do that, that's where we're all going to win. Yeah. And what a lot but of that's all good points. The, 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 the most important thing is they should watch rates what rates they are accepting because uh and in some uh areas hot shot truck business is not uh profitable at all <clears throat> uh in northeast uh it's different because uh because of like uh areas like um vermont maine uh mountainous areas where usually big rigs uh barely access and uh, there are not so many loads to go there with the big rig so uh, uh, usually those rates are much higher. So hot shot truckers can focus on those areas uh, to work uh, to work at. And uh, uh, yeah, in but... some areas in Tennessee, for example, hot shot sometimes makes no sense from t to run uh, from Tennessee to uh, North Carolina, for example, because the rates are so much different so much different than here in Norses. And uh, insurance is a really big uh, factor because it depends where you have your business incorporated, the insurance different insurance might might be uh, anything from 10,000 to 25,000 for new business or the business uh, which is in the, uh, which is operating for more than a year. So uh, based on these things, of course, um, everything is comparable but number one is uh, what rates you are uh, accepting and uh, uh, so the for hot shot truckers the number one priority is uh, to say with uh, one word don't hang out we are nine cars hang out because that's not we're uh, like if you're taking business from nine cars you are not making money as hot shot truckers nine cars hang out on auction yards and um, they take uh, big volumes and the rates are significantly lower than to take loads one by one. For example, like uh, I often see on Central Dispatch, if you're taking one car from Connecticut to uh, Pennsylvania, it pays 300. But you take, but uh, some, a lot of brokers advertise that it's two cars from Connecticut to Pennsylvania, it pays 400. So very big difference, 300 and just one more unit added and just $100 more. It makes no sense for hot shutters, right? It's much better. It makes no sense take... for anybody. 
yeah, of course, it's much better to take uh, another Connecticut car to Pennsylvania, but from another broker. It might be even to the next door dealership and it, it still pays you 300. So you are making now 600 as gross. <clears throat> I'm just comparing uh, how, how these rates drop when there are two cars advertised by one broker. So uh, that's what I'm saying. The number one is what kind of rates we accept. So every, everything can make their own business work, but again, it's comparable and what kind of rates we, uh, uh, we basically work at. Now, the problem is a lot of people, whether it be Hotshot or Stinger or High Mount, a lot of them don't understand the true cost of doing business. So when you say that they have to watch the rates that they're accepting, before they should be accepting any rates, they need to know their true cost of doing business. Absolutely. I don't right. see I don't see a huge difference in cost per mile operating a truck if you if you put it up apples to apples and you really match a stinger truck versus a hot shot. It's a smaller investment to get into, but the numbers all correspond directly that you can make a lot more money with a stinger than you can with a hot shot. A lot more. I mean, that's and my experience. I had. And have a lot less money into it. Well, but you I can think, have a lot less money into it. Yes. Well, I think what I, I don't understand is buying a brand new $80,000 dually on three cars. When you could go buy a nice new single axle semi and haul five or six cars and still be less money into it than you are for just that dually truck. I agree. A hundred percent. That's exactly what I was saying. Yeah. If somebody asks me uh, my opinion about this business, first thing I'm telling them is, are you a mechanic? At least can you handle uh, regular maintenance of yes. your truck and trailer? Yes. Uh, the, let's say Kaufman trailer, for Preach. example, that's the sim simplest uh, construction very simple you, you can <laughs> by your hands you can change any like you can change replace axles uh, complete axles it's 400 pound for four car trailer and the whole axle comes you can just buy a thousand dollar on ebay and change by your beer hands now, to take it to shop and make made um ask shop to change it for you it might uh cost you two thousand dollars so uh, that's what I'm telling them. Are you ready uh, when you're starting uh, trucking, car hauling? Uh, do you have a simple knowledge about the equipment you are going to work with? Can you change tires? Can you change axle? Can you replace wheel, et cetera, bearings? So um, yeah, that's uh, what makes sense. And uh, after which, um, you can really make a decision on yourself if it works for you. Because if something breaks and you pay $3,000 for towing and the towing just takes duly and they charge the same amount if they are taking Stinger, it doesn't matter that they charge almost the same. So paying 3000 in towing already killed your business. That's I, I'm blown away by that statement because are you a truck driver? Are you a hotshot driver? Are you a car hauler? Are you a mechanic? And if you're forced to do both, your profit margin, your your rate per hour has to be divided by all of those. That's why I say you have to truly count the cost. And even though you might be doing the work yourself, um, I don't mow my own lawn because my rate at work is X amount per hour because I'm responsible for all the revenue of my whole company. And I'm not going to get into my exact revenue numbers, but if my hourly rate is $1,000 an hour, but I can pay a kid 20 bucks to mow my lawn, I'm an asshole to mow my own lawn because I'm taking away $980 from that. That's why mechanics, and that's where, that's why mechanics don't mow lawns. That's exactly what I'm trying to get at. So to ask a car hauler slash hot shot slash truck driver to be his own mechanic. It's taking away from his revenue source at that point. And I don't, but that's a business plan. I just am blown away by. Well, I think what, I get, if, if you're in it, yeah, Jason, go ahead, please. 
I said, I get what Ziggy's saying um, because I, Jay's probably seen my video. I had a video there on YouTube of my shop at the house. Um, I've got a lift. I've got everything I need to do the work. But if I have a problem with, say, uh, I don't know, an axle on a trailer, um, is it is it smarter for me to go drop it off at a shop and pick up one of my other trailers and go work for the day? Yeah. Because if I'm not working, um, a, I'm not making any money and that trailer is probably going to be sitting there all day or two days or three days, uh, without anybody touching it at the shop. So why not, you know, have a backup plan, drop the trailer off, um, uh, skip being the mechanic and, uh, you know, get back out on the road with, you know, be versatile with, that's what you can do. Yeah, that's a very good point because uh, most of the time mechanics are very busy at shops. Uh, it, it was my experience in the northeast. I don't know if somebody else has better experience, but usually I'm told you got to wait three, four days before I touch your trailer. So uh, if the um, problem is that easy as to fix or change bearing, uh, it does not require very licensed mechanical work to change bearing on your uh, axle and you will save maybe thousands uh, well at least hundreds oh, if not yeah. thousands of dollars so that's I'm my with point. you on that like, Nick. and and, and you save time as well and you save time as well and it it it, it, it feels uh, satisfactory that you have that you know how to change stuff on your um on your equipment i mean it it feels good um to speak uh, from emotional point of view. I like it. Exactly. I'm emotional with my money. So for me, it's either <laughs> downtime and lost revenue and the added expensive repair cost or it's debt service. And like I said, that's why, and, and again, my way is not the only way. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. That's what works for me. Exactly. And you I'm speak of the Northeast, you speak of the Northeast a lot. That's the only area I run. And I've got eight trucks running the Northeast from Connecticut to Jersey back and forth. And it's just amazing how much freight is available at the higher rates. You don't have to accept the lower rates. You were completely correct there as far as looking at multiple picks being more profitable, yes. But a lot of people think they, they see a car posted for $100 to go 1,000 miles. doesn't mean you have to accept it at that. They're brokers. They don't set the rates. The truck owners do. And to understand that they don't exist without us, that's number one. If all the brokers in the world disappeared, which I'm not trying to get rid of the brokers, I'm not going to get into that mess, but the freight still needs to be moved so they would go direct with the carriers. So the brokers are important in some areas, in some ways, but the carriers are still going to move whether or not they exist. And just to play, <laughs> just to play devil's advocate, to educate the shipper and coordinate and interface there is a there's a service there and that and often absolutely that's what the broker's doing in fact if you are getting a vehicle from a broker and you have to do all the detective work then why are they there yep yeah, exactly. That, that's a good point. I have told this many times from, by brokers, and I went into argument with them a few times that, uh, yeah, they told me, you have to call and make sure the car is ready. You have to call and uh, arrange time, uh, arrange which day you are picking up. Okay. So I have a question. What are you are doing then I, I as mean, a broker? Arranging time and communicating. And wow, when you're told you can't communicate, don't even get me started. But there is, you know, there's a certain amount of love of communication that needs to happen. But uh, detective work, I'm, I, you know, I want to be paid for detective work. Just like if I'm going to mow the lawn, I certainly am not going to pay the kid 20 bucks an hour to tell me my grass needs to be cut. There you go. Good point. Yeah, I mean, we, we each have our own business plans. And like I said, if, if people are very dependent upon brokers, some people are just not good salespeople, and that's fine. But to educate your broker to what you need per mile, to educate your customer why sitting on that car for 10 days at auction before it gets moved, they need that faster service. Get into historical 
numbers, look at NADA. NADA says that it costs the average vehicle loses between eight and twelve dollars per day in value. That's the average normal car, not an exotic car, not specialty cars. The average car loses between eight and twelve dollars a day in value. Call it ten dollars for the middle number. If the car sits there for six days to save the dealer forty bucks, he lost twenty. He's stepping over dollars to get to pennies and to educate them the difference. That's where so, a good broker would be able to do that or a good salesperson. So every time that I got to go <laughs> round and round with a broker to get an extra box of chicken nuggets, I need to send them the facts that says you're losing 10 bucks a day by not giving me another six chicken nuggets. Well, if if you have to fight that much for six chicken nuggets, oh boy. Let me tell you, <laughs> that's what it's that. Well, being a dispatcher on load boards, that's exactly what it's like. Not an exaggeration. God bless you. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, God bless me in the. Like, I don't do it anymore, by the way. Right. Because I, you know, I like the toy in the Happy Meal. I don't want to have to fight for the toy. Right. It's a Happy Meal. There's a toy in it. It's ridiculous. That well, I'm educating. About it, this is this is what it's like to work with the load boards. It's maddening. Ziggy, do you have load boards, or are you a direct customer kind of guy? I took le- I took less than four percent of my business last year off of Central Dispatch. Less than four percent. Wow. Okay. Less than four percent. Wow, that is awesome. Well, can- I. Congratulations, by the way. That is awesome, man. Oh. Woo! Way to go. You got to know your own numbers, and I can't be profitable. If I don't price my freight out properly, um, we, we can get as deep into this as you want. Uh, technically, I'm stealing from my drivers by not pricing out my freight properly. Amen. They have to do the job. That's right. And ask my, ask my drivers to move cars at substandard rates, I feel is... Wrong. So, Ziggy, I've got another question for you. You had customers. You did less or four percent off load boards last year. That's awesome. So, when people talk about taking rates, don't take cheap freight off load boards. How do you address? Mm -hmm. How do you address that? I I'm very simple, and yeah, I mean it's it's hard for me to. I'm trying to be polite because we're on public air per se. Family family show. show. Yeah, because it's a family show. But if you call me and ask me before anything else in the world, when I get a phone call and says, I need a car moved from point A to point B, how much? Well, if if you're not an existing customer and the first thing you ask is price, you didn't ask me if I have insurance. You don't know if I'm legally registered with the DOT. I, I tell people very clearly too much and hang up. Yeah, but about eighty percent of those people call me back. Yeah, they do. But here's where you're missing it. How did you get people to call you to even ask you for a quote? Word of mouth. I don't advertise anywhere. So you do you talk to people? Very minimally. I mean, I go to the auctions, and the only auction I myself go to, and I don't have a sales force at the auctions. Like I said, I've built this business over 20 years <clears throat> excuse me i go to bordentown new jersey if they walk in the room everybody there knows who i am um as you network with other companies <laughs> other companies know that i handle point a to point b yeah so when somebody goes in the transporter room in bordentown new jersey they say hey i need a car move from connecticut to new jersey or new jersey to connecticut they'll give them my phone number yeah. Everybody wants to be in competition and cut each other's throats. And I know we can't legally price fix, and I'm not suggesting such. But if we all educated each other, uh, and we all sat down and said, my cost per mile is $412 per mile, which we all know that's an arbitrary bullshit number. But if we all spoke good. what our true cost per mile is, we could educate each other why our cost per mile is what it is. It's so interesting. Having That's what people are saying. The people that are, are really focused on really do want. It's like people are begging for some price fixing. 
because it's gotten out of control. No, no price fixing would only work between that particular group. It's not going to work. But it's a federal offense. And it's a federal offense. So, so teach everybody what their cost is per mile. Um, teach everybody they, to talk to people. Is anybody else on the phone have a stinger truck? I ro- okay. I just did the robot because. I said, does anybody else on this call have a stinger truck? No. No. I used to have, but I don't have anymore. Okay. What did a Continental steer tire cost you? Driver steer. Steer tire? Steer. Oh, steer? 700. 700. Yeah, 600 plus FET is our suggested retail price. As an eight truck company, I paid 590 plus FET. Now that we're starting to work together, and there's a group working together, and I'm not going to push that too much, but that same tire now is purchased for under $500, including FET. Yeah, but you can... Because we're negotiating at levels of 500 trucks now Ziggy, by t- working together. Tell us, Ziggy. It's on the screen. Tell us, Ziggy. The name of it is IATA. It stands for the Independent Auto Transporters Alliance. And by working together... By the guy that is my competitor, we have a handshake gentleman's agreement where we don't chase each other's customers, but now you take his 20 trucks, my eight trucks, another guy's two trucks, another guy's 60 trucks. You put them all together, now we're negotiating these prices for 500 trucks. 477.24 is the price of a Continental steer tire for a Stinger for IATA members. And those are the things I'm talking about. Know your cost per mile. Know your expenses. Work on those things you can't change. Knowing where to buy fuel. If you want to buy fuel in Bordentown at the Valero, it's approximately 28 to 32 cents cheaper than the truck stop right behind it. That's right. I choose, I fuel at the Valero. I'm a cheap son of a gun. (laughs) Yeah, that's a very good point. That's only um, that's only way to uh, save money and uh, be uh, stay profitable in this business. Uh, to know all of these um, places where you fuel cheaper, where you buy service or buy tire cheaper than uh, it's on the market. Team up with other truckers, so you're getting wholesale prices. Yeah, that's uh, that's yep. pretty much yeah, that's pretty much very uh, smart hey, approach. Um, and regarding the rates, um, regarding rates, uh, uh, the best uh, the best thing I'm telling to people who ask me how much I should accept, how much price I should accept, I'm telling them I have such system. I, I place uh, $0.95 per mile. So I don't see any load that pays less than that. Well, I'm, to- I'm talking about hot shot uh, price. I don't see like my eyesight, it does not fall in my eyesight. If somebody pays 70 cents per mile, I don't know existence of that load. I don't know about it. Good. Because, good. uh, Yeah, because that's what I have uh, on the central dispatch. If something pays less than 0.95 cents, uh, I'm sorry, 0.95 dollar a mile, uh, I don't know about this load. And by, only see by the way, case. you're talking yeah. regionally because different regions, just for anybody that's confused by yeah, what you I, said. Yeah, of course. Regionally. Yeah, of course. I, yeah. I talk about origin, um, re- regionally because, yeah, I'm, uh, northeast, uh, northeast. This do- dollar per mile yeah. is pretty much um, the uh, average in hot, for hot shot truckers. Is that right? I is think it? that's the average. Um, oh, it's the oh. average for stingers. Uh, yeah, yeah. If we make this area uh, even smaller, like Connecticut to Philadelphia, Connecticut to Pennsylvania, yes, maybe one point twenty-five, uh, one point thirty uh, dollar per mile. But I'm talking about, let's say, Bangor, Maine, coming down to uh, Harris, Harrisonburg, Virginia. Uh, like, I mean, that distance. Uh, I, I don't think that stingers are getting dollar more than dollar. For that distance, uh, uh, hot usually do like uh, approach the stingers I know up in that area do. There's only well, there's only two major companies in Ver- in Vermont. There's only two major companies, and yeah, I know that they're 
for stingers. Yeah. Yeah. At the cost of three hundred thousand a truck, and insurance being what it is, it needs to be. Yeah, and see what I see in the in all the people that I'm talking to is uh, if you've got you you're only going to get so much money for for a car. Is that true, Ziggy? I mean, if you're running two three hundred miles, you're going to tap out at some point, and then once you cross over that three hundred or however many whatever the magic mile is. It starts to drop, doesn't it? Um, I I handle a consolidated area, so I, I really can't address a longer haul situation. But I'm I know that for a fact, in certain lanes, people are doing well over a dollar a mile for stingers per car. In a in a consolidated area, though, right? It's a smaller radius. Well, he, he speaks about Vermont and New Hampshire. Those are very difficult to get to, as he said, and those create their own kind of premium. Yes, the, the smaller, shorter areas create a premium based on that, but when you have no freight going up, you only have freight coming down, you need to price that car based on the fact that you're running twice as many miles for it, per se. Right. I mean, a dollar per mile is great if you're already there, but if you have to trace it 100 miles to get to it, yeah. A dollar per mile is not enough. Yeah, yeah, that's where that's where new cars come because usually new cars, um, new car yards, um, they have loads going to that areas, uh, taking from New Jersey or Rhode Island. Uh, there is always some kind of load. Uh, uh, the new cars are always moving from that area up in the north in New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine, um, and new cars is a completely different animal uh the way they, they they calculate rates it's pretty much very regulated and uh, uh ver, ver, very different from used cars used cars are more open market more open competition and new cars to me like uh, what i have witnessed um looks like uh, much more closed market uh, the brokers are like um looks like the brokers have grabbed that market and uh, they are setting everything and the carriers are not. That's my well, it's because of carrying there's lack of education. Again, it, it's a lot of these brokers don't have trucks or they don't have enough for the capacity. If they can get Ziggy to move it for $2 a truck loaded mile, why would they pay J $4? If Ziggy wants to haul it for cheaper than it costs to operate, then he's going to be out of business. And the people that don't want to understand or don't want to talk about their true costs per mile, that don't want to get into a deep enough conversation with their own accountant to understand it, those are the guys that won't be there. The guys that Ty and Jay work with to consult in that manner, um, they have the experience to say, hey, you don't have to listen to me. That's okay. But with what you're doing right now, I can show you on paper how you're going to fail. That's on them if they don't want to listen. It's, you can only operate at a loss for so long. When you buy a $70,000 dually, <clears throat> you buy a $12,000 trailer to pull behind it, and all of a sudden you're in business, well, you don't get any overhang on that trailer. And to not know that because you didn't speak to the right people and I know you guys have had Brian Riker on the phone call also. Mm -hmm. Brian does my fleet compliance. I thought I knew everything. <laughs> I heard Brian and I'm an idiot. It's <laughs> kind of like my wife. He told me I'm an idiot. But he helped me avoid very costly mistakes. DOT fines can be crazy nowadays. And the CSA points that add to your insurance cost. Mm. You're going to pay for that ticket six times, seven, eight times. Yeah. It, it's easier for me to consult with Brian and he makes sure I don't have those headaches. Yeah. I mean, you can only be so good at so many things. Be willing to spend a couple of pennies to make a whole bunch of dollars. Again, a $70,000 pickup truck with a $15,000 trailer running 100,000 miles a year. In three years, that truck's done. Were you smart enough to take out a three-year loan where you no longer have a payment, or did you take out a six-year loan because the payment was cheap 
Now you owe 45000 on a truck that's done. It's a failing business model. <clears throat> or you can sell that truck to someone who wants to get into the business. Oh, no. So he fails instead of you. Oh, there you go. Oh. <laughs> No, that's not that, that was a joke. No. <laughs> and then Candy points out, don't forget the thirty thousand a year in insurance. Yeah, and that's that's exactly correct. And that's just that's still just truck trailer and insurance. Yeah. Now put fuel in it. I mean oh. I, I laugh these guys want to sleep at the way stations in a dually without a proper sleeper. And they don't even know that they're breaking the law. Oh, yeah. Wow. If, if you did it someplace discreet and didn't admit where you slept, you're okay. But do it right under their nose. Yeah, that's smart. Put it on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> we, call, we call that stepping on your own man parts. Hey, I got one more question for you, Ziggy. Um, Jay said you've got some uh, IA. What was that again? IATA. IATA. Iota? Yes, sir. And what, how do yep. we, can we become members or what are you doing with that? Um, take a look at it at iota.biz, okay. iata.biz. It'll tell you who we are, what we are. And if you have any questions at all, ask me. Okay, cool. I appreciate Something that's helped me in my own business save, according to my accountant, just over $21,000 last year. We launched it on January 1st of 18. Took us almost two years to put it together before we felt comfortable launching it. And there you go. I got it on the screen. I-A-T-A dot biz. Independent Auto Transporters Alliance. That's cool. And that <coughs> you just go and log in and you can become a member. Yep, that's... Yes, awesome. you can. I, I have seen this uh, before and... Yeah, I'm pretty much uh, That's cool. interested to get into membership. Thanks, Ziggy. I didn't know that. I'm, I thought I knew that was yours, but that's neat. I love that. It is. I'm one of the many founders, and it's you can click on there. The website's going through redevelopment right now because there's some very ugly redundancy in there. And we're doing, it's going through complete rebuild, should be done. I've been told by the end of the week three times, but <laughs> we all know how web service goes. Two weeks. And it'll be cleaned up soon. Yeah, two exactly. Weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. We'll be ready to go. But I mean, you know, it's a great, man. This is great, man. Yeah, Ziggy, I, I really appreciate you, man. That's. Oh, it looks uh, like I'm I appreciate what you guys are doing. Yeah, it looks like I'm registered on it. I went, I went in and it's. Yeah, I'm registered. I have a profile. Cool. And I out adopt is what's your company name? If I'm uh, my company name, let me see. I just logged out because I registered on it quite some time. Oh, dang it. Quite... I A T A. I missed should the... be novative, uh, novative, N O V A T I V E. It won't let me. That's weird. It won't let me type it in. I was able to misspell it in the live chat, but I can't get the corrects. Don't even understand that. But I-A-T-A dot biz is what you want to check. That is correct. And by the yes. way, while yep. while we're here, um, as a thank you to you guys, listen, uh, Nick, I just pulled up goforitapp.com. Now, this is your site, right? Exactly. All right. And, and what is Go For It app about, Nick? So go for it app um, is free uh, electronic bill of lading, uh, e-pod, um, where transporters can inspect vehicles. Um, this is uh, this app is perfect for owner operators that run their own business and have regular customers, uh, so they are not getting uh, mo most of the loads from uh, other load boards. So. Uh, they need the tool, the easy tool that saves them money uh, and time in it, car inspection. Also, um, this app has other other features uh, like you can uh, monetize your inspection if you are dropping off the vehicles on uh, auctions like Copart or IAA. A lot of uh, 
overseas dealers are purchasing vehicles on those auctions and they don't have enough information when they are buying their um, vehicles on these auctions. They don't have um, enough information what they are buying. So any kind of uh, heads up from transporter or a photos or some detailed information about the condition of the car, how engine uh, works, how rusty it is underneath and stuff like that might be valuable for others. So uh, the transporters have a chance to monetize their detailed inspection if they are regularly working on auctions like that, Copart, IAA, and also Mannheim, yeah, a lot of as is the cars that are sold as is, uh, the inspection are, are very important for those type of cars because Mannheim and Odessa, they don't spend uh, their staff hours to do detailed inspection on those cars because they are sold as is. You know what's interesting? I was just reading an article that it's important to companies like Carvana and CarMax and there's even another uh, car score. I don't. I, I got to learn more about car score, but uh, that the level of inspection helps them sell a car online. So that inspection is very important to their business model of getting a car sold without it you is. being and, able to see it. And and uh, what is uh, what is the most important <laughs> thing is. Uh, uh most important thing is uh the transporters are unbiased party like uh, i'm not interested if the car is sold or not i just do this inspection and you give me five star if i did inspection thoroughly right and um so i'm not interested if you buy this car or not i am more interested to do my job to inspect vehicle but if i want to make extra money in inspection uh i would uh I would do some more inspection of engine underneath how rusty it is, et cetera. And I might make more money, extra cash, like, like, let's say tips, tips for transporting. We, we are not tip, right? The transport, nobody tips transporters very rarely. Now I've been working and my friends working, uh, taking private cars from New York to San Francisco. People are moving from be between these states. And uh, so, uh, so someone is carrying your car from New York to San Francisco and delivers without any single scratch and you are not tipping guy, <laughs> guy like you're tipping every pizza delivery, right? But you don't tip the guy who brings car from New York to San Francisco. So this is kind of, um, this app also allows the car transporters to make extra cash by this uh, selling, by monetizing the inspection they are doing. And soon, pretty soon, we are going to test uh, and launch the um, uh, the platform where you can find loads and assign loads directly on the phone. No load board, no inter, no website. Right. Just on the phone. Kind of a load uh, matching. And right now, yes. this is on the iOS device only, correct? Yes. Right okay. now, it's iOS only. Okay. Um, and uh, pretty cool, man. So check it yes, out. Uh, Go to the App Store and check out. Go for it. Um, and that is really cool, man. That Thanks for sharing that with us. Also, I want to say this because I, I know that um, I know we're going to wrap it up real soon is that I'm just going to go ahead and we talked about earlier, Ty, CTS Business Coaching. Here's your site, right? CTSBusinessCoaching.com. Yes, sure. All right. So, I mean, Ziggy's been talking about it. If you've got, you know. You got to understand your cost per mile. You want to know what you're getting into? You go to ctsbusinesscoaching.com. Well, what's really cool too, Jay and, and Ziggy, I, I hope I'm not talking out of turn here, but guys like Ziggy, myself, I mean, there's Uncle Jimmy up in the, I mean, we just, we all know a lot of people. And I think, man, to have senior guys like Ziggy and myself around that can talk about this stuff is it's really awesome, and the, and again, thank you, Jay, for the platform to do it. It's it's fantastic. Thank you, All right, man. I, 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 well, I'm pissed off. You just called me a senior guy. I'm not senior <laughs> citizen yet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Hey, I, put, I put myself in that boat too. Okay. Yeah, man. We're all in there, dude. Yeah, right. We're all gonna be hanging out at the uh, Golden Corral. Um, <laughs> so this is. Uh, I want to thank you for that mention. This is Auto Transport Intel. This is the the first official car hauling business channel and i mean i really appreciate that and you know what when i'm on youtube 
I am always looking for more guys like Jason Kendall. Kendall Enterprises. Jason, I've got your YouTube page pulled up here. I really like the videos you're putting out. What can you tell us more about, you know, what you're doing and why you created this channel? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just I'm new to the business and um starting out, I really didn't have I nobody I knew hauled, hauled cars for a living, so I kind of taught myself everything I know. Um I did a lot of research. Um some some good, some not so good, and um <laughs> You know, YouTube was my way of, I get a lot of questions on, say, other social media, and it's hard to keep up with. So the, what I can put out on YouTube for everyone to see just makes it a little easier. And, you know, if I can help one person out, um, learn from my mistake, or, you know, connect with somebody that needs help, um, I'll do whatever. Yeah, it's pretty cool. We were talking about, Jason, you had a video. Uh, you were at, a, at an auction in Maryland, and you did not recommend that auction. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, out of Finksburg, Maryland, um, one of the Copart sublots they have there. There is absolutely no structure or right. anything. This is a sublot. This isn't the main auction, and I know... Because I booked a car once, maybe twice, and I had to have a guy go there, and it, it you know, it was not, it was not easy there, peasy. When you walk into the office there, it's obviously just a trailer at the sublot. There is about 4,000 plastic bags with keys in them, which is numbers written on them, with lot numbers written on them. And there's one guy looking through them. So that's how, if you saw in that video, that's how the um, how the keys were lost for that vehicle. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Oh. So after after you know going back and forth and um, yeah, just a mess. I spent I uh, over three hours there. Yeah, I have I yeah. have marked for myself uh, the places on the map that I have seen that people are interested to give you car as late as possible like you are a transporter right you want to pick up car as soon as possible because you are not paid hourly you are paid per load and there are places like repo yards right <coughs> some of repo yards require 48 hour uh, notice in advance and uh, they have so little time period uh, for picking up yeah car, they're open from they're open from 11 to 1.15. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And if you are five minutes later, uh, they won't release the car because they are interested to give, keep those cars as um, uh, as longer as possible. That's how they make money. So I have marked those it, areas. Yeah. yeah, and simply I don't go there because I, my drivers don't go there. Uh, why? Because it makes no sense. Uh, sometimes they pay good, like their, their rates are good, but there is a reason why. Because, uh, yeah, it's you'll learn to after one, after one time to not go back to a place like that. Exactly, because yeah, that's how they make. Money. I specialize they make money in to keep those cars, not to release. <laughs> and that's how they make money. Oh, I forgot my repo hammer. <laughs> repo <Yeah>. hammer. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, so listen, I want to you know uh, I want to encourage you to check out Kendall Enterprises. Auto Transport Kendall Enterprises on YouTube. And uh, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Um, because I really like I really like the videos you're putting out, Jason. And I, I appreciate you Thanks, Jay. tuning in. I appreciate it's, that. It's awesome. I will, uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll definitely have more after the, uh, the iPad and the GoPro that I broke or replaced. So. Ooh, that's a bummer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, no, and it, been, well, getting some of those shots isn't easy. I know. I uh, no, the, the GoPro made it down uh, the highway the other day for about fifteen miles on the back of the trailer, um, and I uh, didn't like falling off the back of the trailer, so it's not working very well. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, you know, you got to worry. It's like being you're part, you're now like you know how it feels to be part of the staff at National Geographic. 
You know? Yeah, because we get crapped on every day. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, I'm going to also, I'm going to say thanks to Sun Country Trailers. Really appreciate what they do. And, um, for being a part of this channel. Really looking forward to, uh, in fact, Sun Country Trailers is going to be with us at AHA. They're a, they're yes, a, they are. That's right. And we're going to, Ziggy, we're going to see you at AHA. Yes, we will. So we're going to, we're going to continue this information party. Um, if, you know, if it can be categorized as that, which, you know, it's a free country. This is a family show. We can do that. Um, and I want to listen, I want, I really want to thank you guys for taking the time. It's now it's 1030 central. It's 1130 Eastern car haulers got to get sleep. Right. And so I'm going to, I'm going to let you guys go. I really appreciate you taking the time to be a part of this tonight. Thank you, Jay. Thank you yeah, very much thanks for, for having us, Jay. Have a great day, gentlemen. Okay. Great day. All right, we'll talk to you guys later. You too, Boy. man. Everybody go yeah. make money tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Get those gold you get those gold bars. Yeah, bye. All right. Take care of you guys. Absolutely. <laughs> Have a great night. Thanks, Nick. Bye. Thank you, man. Bye. Thanks, Ziggy. Thanks, Jason. Bye. Thanks, Ty. Bye. All right, cool. So I'll tell you what, here's what I'm gonna do. As they sign out, um, I'm gonna keep I wonder if I wonder if we still have that delay. Let's do this. Let's try and uh, let's do this. Here, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. This. And let's see here. No, not that. Dang it. Hey, I can't get the... Uh, that's kind of interesting. Can't get that screen to show up. Here, let's do this. Okay, I'm going to end the meeting. And I'm going to shut that down. And then I'm going to do this. And where is my video capture device? How interesting. Where did it go? Let's try. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do that. Oh, that's weird. It won't even show up now. I've got nothing. I'm in the darkness. That is totally weird. Where did, where did Jay go? Here, let's do this. I'll tell you what. Here's what we can do. Um, I'm going to do this. Yeah, you know what? I think I think the camera failed. Let's do device default. Let's do activate. Okay, let's try here. Actually, here we go. Hey, how we doing? Okay, so we got the camera back. Now I wonder if we have the delay. Do we have the delay like we had earlier? Are we... Is it, are we, are we having deja vu of two and a half hours ago? I don't know. Let me know if, if I've got, I'm curious if I have the same delay that I had two hours ago. So listen, you guys, I want to thank you for tuning in again on a Tuesday night, spending your time here. Um, you know, it, we, I really look forward to this. I know that there are others that look forward to this. I don't know if it's everybody yet, but it is a growing movement um, in fact, uh, we are going to be at AHA, the Auto Haulers Association of America. Ty and I will be there in two weeks. Two weeks from today, I will already have given uh, my presentation and speech at a breakout session. And we're going to be talking with other carriers and there's some other services as members of that, of that organization. And this will be my first time speaking at AHA. You know, I went. I was live at the Mid America Truck Show last month, and so I want to do more location events and speaking events. It's great for the content for the channel. It's great for the network, and I think it's good for the industry. And that's the whole point: is that finally the car hauling industry has a centralized news information source. Not everybody knows about it yet. That's okay. But I think, as you guys know, that if you look at past interviews. Man, there's been a lot of great interviews, and I'm really excited to keep ramping it up, talking to more companies, sharing information. We know there's a lot of knowledge that needs to be gained and shared so that folks that are trying to get into this industry 
get in with information rather than finding out the hard way at a truck stop with some guy waving hundred dollar bills and talking about gold bars falling from the sky so listen you guys i'm jay at auto transport intel if you got a question send me an email auto transport intel at gmail.com don't forget to give a like to share and subscribe and again i want to thank my sponsor sun country trailers for the month of april I really do appreciate it. And next month, we're going to be learning more about Evil Sizer and Associates and PFI, PFA Transportation Surety and Insurance Services. And I want to thank you guys so much for being a part of the show. Um, I'm going to roll the car hauler now. It is time to get out of here. And I'll see you next Tuesday. We're going to talk to PFA Transportation Insurance and Surety Services and learn all the benefits of talking with experts in the broker insurance field here comes the car hauler i'll see you guys next week nine o'clock p.m eastern eight o'clock central only on auto transport intel the car hauling business channel thanks so much